Right, hello and welcome to episode 4 of um, the Mage the Ascension game, Masters and Monsters. Hello and welcome back to episode 4 of Masters and Monsters. We're all back here in the studio, uh, apart from Roger this week, who I think we said last time wasn't going to be here, but anyway. Um, so no Canadian Mountie with us this time. Um, in a moment, we're going to uh, go around, say who we are and who we're playing, and I think we're going to do some experience points this time around. Uh, but before we do, uh, please go and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, uh, Garbag Games. <laughs> we have a Discord uh, server with a link below that you can check out and come and join some of the cast uh, talking about our games and some of our idle prattle on there, so that's always fun. Um, you can check out our Patreon. Please consider supporting the show. We've just um, released our first Patreon reward, which is the Lair of the Sewer Cult uh, PDF Adventure. Uh, it's an eight-page PDF, uh, which includes the map that we used in Flint and Steel, Episode 8 and 9, and a whole load of information about what's there, monsters you might fight, things you might find, and how you could fit it into a campaign. So... If you were to go over and kindly support us on our Patreon, you would get that as well. Um, and obviously, don't forget to go and check out Flint and Steel, our Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay show. Uh, we've done 10 episodes now, I think, uh, about there. And uh, <laughs> Adam's just shaking his head, Warhammer. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, they're about to get to uh, the end of the first arc, so that should be fun. Anyway, um, without further ado... Right, so experience to start with. So, we have played three sessions. I tend to do the kind of three points per session, so we'll have nine experience. Ooh. We have a handy little table here in the white book. Almost enough. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get this. I'll get one, I'll get one. Nine. Um, so, if you want a new ability, it's three. A new sphere is ten. Willpower is your new rating. If you're doing abilities, it's a new rating times two. Attribute, it's a new rating times four. A new specialty sphere is new rating times seven, and another sphere is new rating times eight. Um, Arate is also new rating times eight, but that should really involve a seeking, which is a whole little role playing episode, so that's probably not likely. And in theory, backgrounds are new rating times three, but I'd probably rather backgrounds were a thing that go up because of role playing rather than numbers, to be honest. So sure. If you have done something that's made your background likely to like you more or less, then it can go up or down as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, is that all right? Yep, mm -hmm. so we have left, um, I will quickly recap where we are, and then if anyone's spending their XP, though I suspect Colin might be saving it because he quite wants 10. <laughs> um, I, want 10. I, 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 want, I want spheres. Um, so <laughs> Sorry, a new sphere was 10. A new, a new sphere, sphere is 10. 10. Okay, so I'm one point off being able to fill in one of my... One of my uh, missing remaining spheres. One okay, of my yeah. two remaining spheres. Yeah. And then count. Colin will have everything but one. Uh, <laughs> I know everything. Um, and then maybe his bit. avatar will either leave him in peace for a bit or get much worse. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depending yeah. on how you think it works with that particular avatar. So I'll have a quick recap of where we are and we'll see if anyone's spending their points. So, um, our Mountie friend has been left um, out in Limehouse near Chinatown where you were last week. Charlie, the um, ecstatic, um, and his nicked um, cine reel wonder. Um, can we bring that? Wander back with us. Yes, Wander is also coming back with you. Also coming back with you is a 12 year old called Tony, um, who may or may not be a, well, certainly appears to be a reincarnation of a French hermetic uh, master. Mm. Um, and uh, also um, a rather uh, broken, um, uh, possibly early attempt at some form of cyborg. Um, which is apparently American. You're bringing him back with you. He is not dead due to the Etherite's intervention, but that's about it at the moment. So the rest of you are returning um, with these people to Cranfield, um, which is the LRAF base out, out of which Adam and his Etherite colleagues are currently working. Um, and we uh, will pick up the story. You're also going to rendezvous with Harry out there who sent you. So we will pick up the story um, about an hour later at Cranfield once we've checked whether anyone has spent any XP. Shall I go? Yep. Yeah. I'm Pete. Hello. And I'm playing Jeremy Cranthorne, uh, who is uh, an Order of Hermes mage, uh, who got shot in the foot during the war. Um, 
I've spent some experience points on my awareness because last time I think there was a lot of sort of sensing things, yep, discovering things. So he's starting to get a gist of the the flow of magic in the area and his awareness is broadening. So that's gone up to three. <laughs> Adam deals it. I'm Adam. I'm, I'm playing Ape Cohen, a member of the Society of Ether. Um, I don't think I'm going to spend any experience because I think I might move on to a new sphere or yeah, or something along those sort of lines. Quite now because I think I'm anything particularly from. I probably could have learned a bunch of things, but I probably wasn't paying attention. I think probably a new sphere <laughs> is probably more I'd be going for. Which again, I could run away. Be a familiar. <laughs> could be yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm Colin, I'm playing uh, Captain William Rufus Foxmere. Uh, and yeah, no, I'm not spending any experience. <laughs> one more, so I can. I wouldn't have, have one in everything. Um, You're nearly there, aren't you? You've got two. Uh, what happens when you get one in everything? <laughs> then hopefully my uh, my um, avatar will let me have seeking and get air T2. And, uh, and then you've got to get two in everything. everything. And not, and not <laughs> this is going to be a long chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> you stop being a pain in the neck. Possibly, maybe not. Uh, your avatar may possibly stop dragging you all over Western much. Europe in the middle of a war. Nice. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it'll decide that now, it's, now I've actually learned, learned, learned yeah. the basics, I can do something Ideal useful. Ideal <laughs> time to keep doing it, yes. Yeah. Possibly. So, I just think before by the time we start, I've got that level, we'll, we'll be past the end of the chronicle. So. Just before we start, I forgot to mention that this is now available on podcast, and by the time this goes out, I should have all three episodes up on podcast. Uh, the first episode has gone to the top of our list, so it's mm. the most downloaded episode on the, on the, the, on the podcast. Creation one. Character Creation 1. We've got that and six episodes of the Warhammer show on there, so um, it's kind of pipped to the top. So, good stuff. And we'll put more on there. Anyway, sorry. Right. So... Um, Cranfield. Um, Cranfield is um, not the largest RAF base, um, but it's got quite a lot of R&D going on there, which is why the uh, Etherites sort of set up home there when they did. Um, and also it's where they do a lot of like test flights and that kind of thing, and also where aircraft that have been severely damaged at another field more than they could do as field repair are brought back to be repaired as well. Um, so it's quite... I mean, there are still active... Uh, pilot groups here and they do still fly active missions from here but perhaps the sort of civilian service is certainly the focus is more on engineering probably than actual flying mm-hmm. so um you will all be dropped off by the staff car that harry sent out um you will all be dropped off at the um, building that the etherites are currently using um it's a relatively new one they're not in like the complete sort of quickly thrown up concrete prefab bit at the other end of the airfield it is one of the it, it is a proper building um but it's probably about 20 years old it's just a single story red brick sort of type affair um which you're based out of there are some other people in this building mostly the sort of heavy duty r and d people who they think can probably cope with an old bit of etherite oddness <laughs> um, are based out of here um they can, they, can cope, they can cope with him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you see the other guy. The other <laughs> Wait till you see the other Ether, right? Uh-huh. Which we'll go into very shortly. So, oh. um, hey, you, uh, obviously this is home, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, you have a thing on a stretcher, you have Tony say, and... I mostly care about getting the, yeah, the, the uh, Android on a stretcher in. Because, yeah, he needs to be in a... A slightly more controlled environment than you currently is a, la- a proper laboratory right. with a capital L. So, <laughs> possibly between you two, certainly anyway, you can get him up and out of the thing mm-hmm. um, and rush into the. the There's a sort of it's a sort of double open sort of iron doors that's sort of open again, steel doors, fire doors, mm-hmm. um, and open and you go into the lab space. And um, I'm not going to make people roll for this because I think it's not necessarily more of a mechanical thing. It's more of a sort of feeling thing. Once you two go in there, you're aware that this probably would count as a sanctum, basically a place okay. that a mage has made aligned with their That's own. Not magic. for me. Not for you, are too unfortunately. <laughs> mm-hmm. But even so, it is a sanctum, <clears throat> probably an etherite sanctum. So if your sort of paradigm works in the direction of weird science, you're probably good in here. Everyone else, not so much. Um, but, um, <laughs> but you can, you can None still. None of your things work under weird science. Not well, he's got two ears and got yet, so you never know. Um, right, so I use a slide rule. <laughs> it's less far. It's less far gone than a lot of her meds. Uh, yeah. my, my, my entropy and time could could at least hopefully not completely conflict with the rest of yeah. everything else. But the way I actually 
do it. It's still <laughs> blood everywhere and throwing <laughs> bones on the floor. No, that, that that's more my life. Oh, okay, sorry. Entropy, I don't go into his life. There's blood. I haven't got bones for any of them. All oh, right. Well. Okay. Anyway, oh. there's still time. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Still got entropy to do. There's still time to get some bones. <laughs> Not on Oh, you have got oh, Time. Of course it is. It's all Time. Cast the bones. So your, ma- your mathematics and side rules might be all right in here. Exactly. Probably not yeah. other things. Yeah. Right. So you get inside um, the lab areas and there is a slight sort of, you know, you can just sort of feel the hair on sort of your sort of back of your neck and there's something not. So it smells really chemical. In here. It also smells really chemically <laughs> in here and like something, yeah. I will uh, look at Abe and, and say, petrol a bit as well. may I and diesel. hold my cigarettes up or is it best mm-hmm. not to? Um... No, that's fine. Just not in that corner. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Also, as you come in, you get the guy into um in the distant mm-hmm. lab, uh, the the next lab along, which is normally where you have left Jacob, um, Abe. Mm-hmm. You can hear shouting. Some of it is in English. Some of it appears to be in uh, probably Yiddish. You think? Mm-hmm. You two can hear two men having a row in the next large room along. Um, sounds lively. Uh, we're coming in. <clears throat> Got someone that. Yeah, needs a calm environment. Right. Um, two heads poke out of the far end wall, uh, far end door, looking down into the area you just bought the guy. Um, one is a older guy. He's sort of in his late thirties, early forties, so older than Abe, um, but has quite a heavy sort of beard and that kind of thing. Um, and then the other one is wearing an RAF uniform and is a man, probably in his sort of late forties, and looks quite sort of, you know, quite commanding, very tall. Proper. As well. Yeah. And they both sort of look round. Um, mm. It's obviously <coughs> Jacob, and it's also um, Wallace, who's the Commodore um, in this uh, uh, unit space, the, the R&D unit. Right. Who you get on quite well with. Afternoon. You don't know what him and Jacob are shouting to each other. Is it an afternoon now? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, must be good, but yeah. especially by the time we've got back to <coughs> Cranfield. So what's his first name? We've got Calvin? Calvin, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, Commodore? Uh... Oh, you're back, you're back, Cohen. Marvellous. Um, oh, jeez, Mary and Joseph, what is that? Uh, it's a new, bit of an experimental uh, set of uh, medical things from a, a while ago. It's, we're just sort of looking into it right now. Uh, Do you need a medic? Um, no, I think for now, probably best to All stick right, well, without anyone else. Give me a shout if you do. Um, Wondering in... Uh, yeah, no, uh, we might need to get them over to... Um, you know, uh, different engineer. Oh, Fletcher, yeah, all right. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'll get out of your way. That looks messy. Yeah, um, did you want to uh, know who these? I probably ought to. Uh, I'm Commodore Calvin Wallace. This is my division, technically. Well, uh, thank you for having us, Jeremy Cranthorn. Salute. Captain Fox, maybe. Oh, that might be fun. Right, well, um, I will lead <coughs> you to whatever that is. There shouldn't be anything dangerous. That's all right. Give me a shout if you need medics over there. I'll try and find... I'm hoping find not. No, most of his problems are not medical, really. Okay. I was missing my arm. I think that might be medical, but I'll take your word on it that that currently is. <laughs> the arm is only causing problems. Yes, I apologise for the slight altercation. He looks at the other man. We had a little uh, disagreement over who got first dibs on the new fuel reserves. He right. sort of shrugs at you. Okay. Um, well, I thought you'd need it more than we would. Uh, I just thought some, that too. That's a... something I'm not aware anyway, of. I'll leave you. I'll leave you to sort that one out. Okay. Right. He exits through the other doors at the other end of the building, <coughs> um, and Jacob sort of slopes in. I'll still have that to <laughs> Right. Um, Alright, uh, well, let's get him inside. Jacob, what's going on? Oh, I just wanted some of the diesel for the. Um, uh, the that, you remember that funny uh, bit of Poline Messerschmitt they built in the other day? I wanted some extra yeah. diesel to run through it so we could get it to run clean. And, okay. Um, apparently, they've been waiting for the delivery and something, 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 something. Probably a bit of a guesswork anyway, isn't it? I mean, it's not really... I think I can run it. Did you tell me you probably don't need that much? Well, yeah, but, you know, I thought it was best to overestimate. Part of a mesh instrument. Yeah. Yeah, we have to get bits. Okay. Experimental bits. 
Oh, from the other side that you check out what they're up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's oh, when very we interesting. Do it. Yeah, we get sent all <clears throat> sorts. This is all sorts of odds and sods. Anything what? mystical or Sorry, unusual. no one had given me the tour no. yet, so I wasn't oh. quite sure what was going anyway, on. Anyway, I'll go and put the diesel <laughs> down and come and help. Yeah, yeah, probably best. I'll go and do... What are we going to need? Hmm? What are we going to need? One of everything. <laughs> um, well, I think you just need some time in a controlled environment. The main problem is well. that an external uh, environment such as out there has caused a problem. And he's been run ragged. Um, as far as his program is concerned, I don't know if you can work any more on that than I can. But he's definitely been programmed something. He's from the US originally. A while I'll ago. go and get my stuff, um, and I'll get a. But I think he's stable for now. But improving him. Does I don't he need know. some juice? Yeah, I need that. I've given him all, all right. I have, but and I could do some more as well. So. I'll go. Any with... of energy that we have I'll to spare. I'll get some and possibly a bin bag. I'm going to leave him to it and go and <laughs> spend some time with Tony. <laughs> right, Tony is also looking somewhat confused at you all. Um, there fact, is I'll probably actually ask, where can we be out the way? Um, is there any like offices or anything else? That can well, it's probably your office. Yeah, probably <coughs> my office is probably the best place around here. If not, there's like, the main mess, but that's kind of a different building. Oh, it's just... probably your office, and I suspect because this is a department that lots of en- this is a building lots of engineers work out of, there's probably a little like kitchenette common room type area in this building as well. So. That sounds like a good place to start. Yeah, off and get go a there's probably the best. Tea? Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. We'll, right. We'll head over there. I'll show you the way. Um, he's quite dishevelled compared with um, uh, Abe. Uh, Abe. And also, um, I'm not going to try and do it because I will do it wrong and it will sound dreadful. Got a slight tinge of German accent as well. Okay. Um, this way, this way, this way. Right. Um, he leads you past um another room that looks a lot like this one. So think 1940s lab. So there's long mm-hmm. wooden lab benches and um, sinks at one end. Big. Uh, uh, shelves on one side, with glass sort of doors on them. Okay. There's all sorts of random odds and sods here. Um, there's bits and pieces and things and stuff. And as you can say, what appears to be the sort of short block bit of a Messerschmitt engine, which is currently suspended over one of the benches, with what appears to be an extremely hazardous-looking uh, diesel delivery system that appears to consist of a funnel. Um, Great. Uh, and he makes some. I show will, of with my lit cigarette, I will sort of. <laughs> Walk, give that a yeah, bit no, of a no, wide no, berth. Not so much, yeah, no. Um, he makes some show <clears> on the way of lighting s- diesel with a it. cigarette just doesn't happen. No, I know, but <laughs> just for the my, sake of my, my character's not <laughs> an expert in that field. <laughs> and it smells it's, of diesel in here, predictably. Yeah. Um, right, <clears throat> and down the end there is your office. Yeah. Um, so there's a... a so, is Abe's office neat? Is Abe's office a mess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, it's neat. It's very neat. Perpendicular. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, everything's tidy the way right, there's, there's probably neat. loads of paper and, and various different files. It's kind of crowded, very, but it's neat. Yeah. So a very crowded, neat office, and then a small room next to it, which basically is probably about the size of our studio here, with um, some of those low sort of chairs still survived into academia into the yep. 90s, you know, yeah. with a sort of slightly slunched back ones. Yeah, so there's yeah. a few of those down there. Okay. Um, and a kettle, and various little pots of presumably tea and things like that. I'll put the, pe- put the kettle on. And I'll, I'll walk off. Right, where would you have left your relics, Adam, that you're currently working on? Are they in your office or are they on the lab benches? Oh, they're on the lab benches, sort of, with sort of brief notes written down next to them and that kind of thing. As, we, as I go to make a cup of tea, I'm going to get my pocket watch out. Just with so many things around here that look like they could be funky or interesting or magical, <clears throat> I'm just going to, you know, Get my watch out and have a look at it. Move their hands a bit. See if anything happens. If it does anything. Okay, right. Fab, that's definitely a thing. Do you want to try an awareness roll with your newly improved awareness to see if you can sense where anything particularly interesting is? Or do you just sure. want to go in general? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Let's use the skill we've put up. That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, what are you doing, Colin? You're sitting Tony down. I'm sitting Tony down and possibly having a chat and you know, talking to him a bit about things. If anyone will look at any of those, possibly France, how much you what he remembers and, and that and try yeah. and not encourage him to lose himself in it, but, inco- but sort of encourage him to build up an idea, try and help him build up an idea, maybe of what's in what's the other guy in. Okay. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Just, just. Yeah. If anyone you want to look at what's on the end of that table. There, they're the odder things, and I don't think any of that dangerous. Unless you get the puzzle box open, but then I don't know how you do that. So you do okay. that, we'll learn something. Perception and awareness? Awareness, yes. 
Difficult to see. Yes. Oh, two. I think so. That's, that's two. Right, so, um, as you sort of uh, look around, there are, I say, weird signs. The message from the engine is slightly weird, but only very slightly. Mm-hmm. Um, but he'd sort of said on the end of that bench there, which is mm-hmm. just as you come through the double doors, and there's a few bits laid out on the bench. Mm-hmm. Um, one is a wooden puzzle box, mm-hmm. about yay big. Looks like it's made out of mahogany or some sort of tropical hardwood type thing. Okay. Um, it's got um, an Arabic. It's got writing in Arabic on the front, um, and it looks completely unopenable. Okay. But it's one of these ones where there's bits, and you can even sometimes depress bits. And, sure. But can I like play with it for a second, get frustrated, and put it down? Yes. Yeah, that, yes. Um, the other thing is there are some marks on it that suggest, particularly as you're in the order of Hermes, so I've probably come across these sorts of people, it suggests someone with forces magic had a go at this at some point. <laughs> and there's some sort of very light surface charring and stuff. But it oh, doesn't okay. Appear had a, go, had a proper go at it. Yes, but it doesn't okay. appear remotely open. Is that correct, Adam, checking his notes? <laughs> yeah, no, well, actually, there's a small um, uh, Hebrew elf symbol. Oh, there is as well. Yes, there's an elf. Very small one. Which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Mm-hmm. Right. It's probably actually a few. Would you want to describe mm-hmm. a couple of bits? Sure. You describe the things on the bench then. That's probably best. Okay. Thing. There's like a, a traditional flash Gordon like ray gun looking thing. Um. Yeah, like I say, the, 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 beyond that, there's not really much to that one. There's um, a gyroscope, like a big. Well, actually, it's, it's more than you expect. But like you, you know, like you get a big gyroscope in a Victorian type ship, like a big mm-hmm. spinny kind of thing. Yeah. It's like a small version of that. Okay. Um. Spin it. Um, Latitude forty four twenty three, longitude seven nineteen. Is what it comes up with when you spin it. Um, spin it again. It comes up with a different one. Um, and Doesn't come up with the same one. No, no, like a different one. Um, and then there's a, a typewriter. And it looks like it's kind of cobbled together from like bunches of other technology and it's kind of stuck together. It's a bit like a little cool. mini typewriter almost. Yeah. yeah, we're sort of. It looks like the, key, like the, the actual letter dies, so the mm-hmm. things that would hit the ink ribbon. Yep. For our viewers not old enough to have met a typewriter, which there might well be some of them. Um, so the, the actual individual letter dies, almost like welded on, like they came from something oh, okay. else. Um, and yeah, and the different bits are sort of been cobbled together. I like that. Yeah, and it's That's probably typewriter speaks to me. And it's probably got a don't expect much if you put quintessence into it. No next to it or Q energy. Don't expect much if you put Q energy into it. Also possibly Jacob stopped putting <clears throat> the Q energy into it. Because it's finite. <laughs> <laughs> Is there paper in it? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah there'll definitely be I'll paper. Type, Hello, my name is Jeremy. And I'll put a point of quintessence. No, no, I won't do that. Can I use my wonder to put a point of quintessence into it? If the wonder has its own quintessence, route, you can do this. If Pete doesn't know what his wonder does, whereas I do. Yeah. Um, yes, if you. I've got to put of... it near it and think, juice this up, you know, give this some or, power, or, or cue or sort of whatever it says. Put it in the top and see what it does. <laughs> Most people call it quintessence. Right. Yes. <laughs> You're having a nice chance, Tony. As far as you can tell, this guy, he, he's starting to get back. Not all mages remember mm. much of their past life, but particularly the previous mage was a very strong personality. It can kind of start to almost bleed through. He thinks well, which it seems to be Yeah, which doing, seems to be doing with him. <laughs> he thinks this guy grew up somewhere in the south of France. He thinks he was probably quite wealthy. His family probably had a castle, something like that. Um, and he remembers sort of lavender fields and all this kind of stuff, which sounds very much like he's describing Provence or that end of things, which as a kid from Whitechapel he would not probably know about. He's probably not seen a lavender. Um, and um, his, uh, however, he thinks the guy lived most of his life um, relatively near Paris, towards the southern edge of the city. Um, he's, he, he is now openly describing, he says, this guy he thinks he's a wizard. <clears throat> Um, however, he thinks he died in an absolutely horrible fashion. He's really struggling to, so he doesn't really remember anything. He t- keeps having these sort of funny little waking dreams about it the last couple of weeks. Um, it was just astonishingly painful. He doesn't really know what happened. Um, but he feels very bad for the guy, but also kind of a bit confused because it's kind of him. Um, yeah, he's struggling. But actually, you've met mages 10 years older than him that had a far less 
grasp of what they're actually doing. So. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll, I'll try and sort of talk them to, to possibly a, a rather acacia point of view of the whole reincarnation thing. Can't hurt. You didn't even know what the word was till not that long ago, so he'll be yeah. perfectly happy with that I'll, side I'll, of things. Totally, yeah. Right. <laughs> Reincarnation's kind of very a very acacia. Yes, it is. Though. Thing. So. So. And um, you're working on your sideboard. Yeah, I'll clear out a desk and sort of let him get bored. He's much more stable once you get him into the lab environment, mm. things start pinging. Um, as I said, there are maker's marks on some of these parts. It's not one you instantly recognise, mm. but these are the sort of things your master would have kept journals about and things like that. So you have mm. books you can go and look, see if you can work out who he was originally. Oh, yes. I should use my library. Go on there. <laughs> I've, I've got one of those. <laughs> right, and see Somewhere. if you can find. She keeps, she, she, she keeps like journals of the proceedings of the Clockwork mm. Convention and that kind of thing because she yeah, obviously had friends in the Convention. A technical manual would help. Yeah, she's probably not got a technical <laughs> manual this time, but she might know what the she may user have. Guy. She might have something useful. Android three thousand. She might have something useful. And she might be able to tell you who's who's this who this market is because this is probably an individual made rather than a company. I could be a cabal, I suppose, but mm. it's yeah. But no, the Haynes manual for your Clockwork Soldiers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Models 901 to 1010. That would be helpful, I do, but she's not got one of those. <laughs> right, Pete, you put the thing on the typewriter. The typewriter begins to type. Um, your character's from a fairly sort, of, fairly sort of affluent British background, isn't yes. it? Yes. So you've probably attended a decent school. Upper middle class. Yeah. yeah. Um, she, it starts to type a passage which you recognise as one of Prospero's speeches from Shakespeare. Okay. Interesting. I'll, I'll just kind of watch While it. While it's a... typing, the watch doesn't stop, but it's well. It, it seems to almost be following the cadence as if someone was speaking the passage. Yeah. So when you get to the line, because obviously Shakespeare has this sort of very dark. So yeah. when you get to the lines that come very fast, the watch is tick, 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 and then yeah, it's following the pentameter of the mm. Shakespearean speech. Hmm. It's when Prospero is starting to lose the plot on his island, basically. Okay, cool. Sure. <laughs> Madness. Um, hmm. I'll I'll look at this thoughtfully, but I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, if you I'm just going to look. I'm I'm surrounded by all these <laughs> experts, and I'm just going to be trying to look like I'm not completely confused. If you walk past on the way to your books, mm -hmm. someone's made it type Shakespeare again. Hmm. Yeah, you you know, don't have that one yet, though. Did you ask it, didn't you? Uh, I, I, I typed in, hello, my name is Jeremy. Huh. And then I put my um, my pocket watch near it. And then your watch has probably lost some energy because it eats it. Um, oh. Yeah, it <clears> gives <throat> up random bits of Shakespeare. Some in a bit of a pattern, but only when you put quotations in it, so it's can't, you know, it's busy. It's quite a lot of effort to try and work out how it's doing. But it seems to respond to audio questions, but it's also got a countdown running in it. It's not due for another month, so... I think it was a message snuck through to somebody on the Allied side, but I'm not quite sure where from or who. Okay, so someone sent through a bodged together typewriter. Yeah, I think they're either a prisoner or working for because it's made of German parts. Sure. Like so someone in German one of their parts. labs has cobbled something together. Yeah. But we don't know what the. How long have you had this? Uh, a few weeks. But and so it's someone's been, the, the countdown's been running for six months, so it's probably about six months old, I guess. But it's still another, another month before the countdown comes around. It's either waiting for time or for a particular kind of quintessence. Do you a particular frequency? Sure. Um, from what I can work out, but it also, also gives out random bits of Shakespeare in response to questions, but not as far as we tell anything specific. Because again, every time we do it, it requires can much I, of energy. Like. I don't know so feel free works. to play with it if you can get anything out. Can I uh, get my slide rule out and and try to like extend my mind magic into it? See if there's any impression yeah. of who yeah. made you this. Start or... to measure all the components and yeah. all that kind of thing and try yeah. and get an impression of its maker. Yep, yeah, you totally can. No, Arate, that is sensory. So because you know, you're not looking to yes start a massive conversation or anything, you literally just want to. Yeah, maybe pick up on anything that's out of, you know. And also check whether it's got a mind or if it's just responding yeah, yeah, to yeah. someone else's there's something a remote location. Yeah. 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 So we'll just do mind sensory to start with and then you can okay. see whether you want to do more. So what's that? Five. That's a four. Four. Difficulty plus. One. One. 
it's so made. Rubbish. One is a success. Yeah. I think we'll get used to it when is, you're playing. One is all I can do. Yes. So. <laughs> one is a good day if you're coming. Um, but also in Mage, I think particularly, well not in Mage, but in White Walker, you used to roll these massive great dice balls. And it's a bit weird to come down to Mage Arito rolls, but oh, I've got one success. But that's good. That's definitely yeah, yeah. good. Okay. Because most player characters will be rolling at most three, maybe four dice. Okay. Um, and yeah. maybe rolling one or two. Um, right. So, yes. So, it doesn't have its own mind, yeah. but it is in in communication of sorts with a distant mind. You've got correspondence. I do. You do have correspondence. Yes. Okay. Um, it's a bit diff- You would say you are talking hundreds of miles, not tens of miles. Okay. Um, but you get the impression that it's behind some form of barrier or shield or something like that. Okay. But it's remote to you. Um, if you had to make an educated <clears throat> guess, you would say... Is that say, a horse's shield or a mind shield? Mind shield. Mind think. shield. If you had to make an educated guess, you would say somewhere towards... Well, Germany would be the obvious one. Sure. But could also be the eastern edge of France, sure. Belgium, yeah, yeah. possibly even Denmark, anywhere sort of in there, yep. as you think where it's trying to get to. But there is some form of shield. Um, there is um, an intense feeling of sadness about this item um, and um, loss and guilt as well, a lot of guilt. Okay. Um, and the, um, you get the, you think the person that made it was female. I think it's a woman, it feels like that. Okay. Um, and yeah, there's a, a lot of a lot of sadness and a lot of guilt, and um, yeah, a little bit of frustration as well. Okay. But, yeah. Right, you're talking to Tony, as I said. Yes, and this is yeah. going quite well. Um, because he's sensible, he doesn't crash into the right lab entrance. Um, after you've been sort of playing with this for a minute or two, and you've been talking to Tony, Harry enters. Um, because he said he would come up and meet mm-hmm. you up here. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Even though you're technically in his tradition, this is still the first time you've seen him outside of his own sanctum. Sure. That issue with his left-hand side is even more pronounced mm. in this environment, and actually is definitely looking onto the, I'm pretty certain a sleeper's going to look at that and say that's not natural. Right. It really is like he's shifting this half around of him. It looks, yeah. You know, in, in his sanctum, you can kind of brush it off as always maybe he's had a stroke type of thing. Um yeah. yeah. Out here, no, there's something clearly massively not right with that side. I, of I will, I will get it. Thank you. I will not even acknowledge it, as good stiff upper lipped mi- upper middle class Brits would do. <laughs> Hold up, Harry. Yeah. I'll just go, Harry. Left hand. <laughs> and, uh, Jeremy. No, 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 no. Yeah, don't draw attention to it. You don't. Yeah. Right. You I will give him a cigarette. Though, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You'll have to. Like, yeah. Somewhere. That's fine. Um. So this is Tony. I think we did meet, but you were about three, so I doubt you remember me. Um, he's like, but I did know somebody you used to be when I admitted he was not much older than you. So I might be able to help you out, I think. Mm-hmm. And have you been talking about... Yes. What? Yeah. We believe that your previous life, Tony, was as quite how powerful a mythic master that lived in France, um, and was um, uh, would have died um, about how would I have to lie here at the time? It's been about nineteen twenty, been dead about twenty five ish years, something like that. Um, but we knew that you'd been born with his avatar from when you were very little because it was such a powerful one mm. that we were able to pick it up. Um, and don't worry, we'll look after you. We'll make sure your mum and your sister are safe as well. Um, as I say, we thought we had a few more years till this started happening, but obviously there's been a lot going on. But we'll arrange to get you, your mum and your sister somewhere safe just as soon as I can get hold of people. But for now, as you seem to get on well here, let's all sit here and just keep calm and you can ask me any questions if you want. Um, Jacob, the not, that not particularly useful um, assistant of Adams, comes back with biscuits. Suddenly very useful. <laughs> I have purloined these from our American friends. Oh. No, all right. They're sort of a bit like a digestive. Okay. Um, yeah, just sweeter. But, yeah, I purloined them from the Americans. No rich teas. Yeah, I don't think they go in for things with that little sweet. Very well. 
But I've got them. I will dunk an American biscuit in my British tea. Oh, he, he sort of almost like starts at seeing Harry. And Harry's like, oh, uh, I'm, oh, uh, okay, I'm, yeah, off. And he just <laughs> goes. I'm oh, sorry, Harry, old chap, before I forget, and I'll go into my pocket and I'll pull out the bullet with the Nefandi, Nefandus name. On it, someone's written so and so, so and so with the Nefandi yeah. on the bullet. <laughs> yeah, and I'll pass it to him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, check this out for me. I um, found it. Um, the same, the same place we found uh, this uh, point through the window or wherever where the. Oh yeah, I should is. probably go and see that. That, that I'll thing. Wait for, I'll wait for him to come back before I go and see the mm. This is. Oh, this is good. But I've got something I need to try, so he I'll looks be up back. At you. Yeah. you remember that intel you gave me? Yeah. You probably don't read Hermetic Script, do you? No. Well, he'll start to point out what bits mean of the Hermetic Script. Pay attention. <laughs> you remember you said they're waiting <laughs> for the Master to turn up. Mm. That's how you'd write his name. Road trip. So, we've just stumbled across a bullet that was... Is, is that being specifically crafted to kill that master? Mm -hmm. Yes. About 15 years ago, when he first emerged... Well, when he betrayed the Order and murdered his students. Um, Sorry? But I didn't know the project had been completed. The Nefandi. He was a yeah, member I can of tell the that it refers Hermes. to an Nefandi, but I have no knowledge of He was a person. member of the Order of Hermes. And he, about 15 years ago... Well, actually, we have no idea. At some point between 30 years ago and 15 years ago, he fell. He became an Afandus. We don't know exactly when. But 15 years ago, it became obvious uh, as he murdered his four students and left the order with a substantial amount of, well, all sorts of things. Quintessence, premium. Um, neither of you possibly come across that word. No. Um, of quintessence premium it's if you can see through confused faces mm. it's a sort of magical well more of an anti-magical model um, a load of books a lot of other things you shouldn't have and I knew various of his old chat of his old cabal were looking to hunt him down I, I suspect I might know who made that but he had them killed about a decade ago I didn't know anything would ever finish the project even well, it was in a small box, in a large box, in the basement where we found that Tony. creature. And Tony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if there's one thing I have learnt in these many thirty years, is never trust a coincidence in this world. Nope. Speaking briefly of guns. Well, hold on to that for now. Of course. And I'm actually going to walk back to the typewriter, so. Okay. Speaking very briefly of bullets and guns, it would be nice if you could arrange. For me to have a weapon that isn't German just before someone starts. That's probably questions. a good plan, isn't it? I'll find. <clears throat> I'll talk to Wallace. I know the guy that commands him. He's, um, sort of. I, I won't care to call him an acolyte. That suggests he does as a mage tells him, but he knows who we are. He had one in his family. Um, so he sort of knows who we are and what we do. Sort of. But he yes, got on very well we, with Abe's. We met briefly. Yeah, he got on very well with Abe's late master. Um, she was killed a couple of years ago at Hornburg. There was a big. Actually, it's out of both of your time frames. There was a large magical battle in Germany in Hornburg about 18 months ago, and it killed an awful lot of masters that we had. Right. Um, effectively, the, the, about the only good thing about Nefandi is they all believe them to, themselves to be the most powerful mage in the world, or have the potential to be, and they all believe themselves to be divinely, well, Whatever the opposite of divinely correct in their acts are. So they tend not to work together. Ah. What emerged at Hornburg, uh, um, Hornburg was a cabal of Nefandi. That's not been the case since the 1300s. Blimey. And we sent an awful lot of people out there to deal with it, and virtually none of them came back. Occasionally stuff rocks up. In fact, if Abe goes past, he might be able to find us something. Occasionally stuff that was lost there turns up, um, normally looking like it's been squashed beyond recognition, like it's been, you know, near a star, for instance, um, and the village is gone, just disappeared. All the trees, all the roads, all the castles, all the sewer systems, all the buildings, all the stables, all the outhouses, all the roads, 
all of it is just gone. It's just a bare big. patch of land. Oh, it's not not gone. like a big hole in the ground. Well, there's a dip, but not but not a crater, no. Yeah. And it's just all gone. Every last blade of grass that was in the bounds of that castle is gone. And unfortunately, every single master we spent we sent. It's gone. So you get left with the likes of me that weren't able to go. And the likes of you lot who were too young to go. Well, I'm sure we'll give a good showing, Harry. Chap. Oh, we'll do our best, won't we? Right. Abe, have you found your books? Yes. Have you looking for books? Mm-hmm. Um, right. When you go back past that way, you can see that Harry has appeared. Um, as I say, not looking good out of his sanctum at all. Okay. I probably also would call into um, the, the Mary Const- Constall. Yes. The female, the, the, the head of the corporate convention. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of wrong her. Um, you, well, you kind of wrong her, yeah. Well, I assume I'd put the call in and she'd go back. Yeah, right. that's what I mean. You have left a message, basically, yeah. like, with her secretary or whoever is running yeah, yeah. Store, right? right, Um, you go back past where these guys are. Um, Jacob seems to have got some biscuits. He's probably stolen them from the Americans again. He keeps pinching things from the Americans. <laughs> Biscuit? Not right now. My hands are a bit messy. Oh, <coughs> Sit one biscuit? Or just use back and throw something? Uh, I can ask him. I'll go and ask him if he wants a biscuit. He just wants a Did you get me that energy? Oh, yep, 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 yep. Right, he comes back again. Um, He's got two um canteens, water flasks. Cheers. I'll go and feed the rest of the guy with his biscuit then. Yeah, as long as he seems happy with the idea. I think, um, yeah, water should be fun. Canteen. Points at Harry as if Harry can't see him. Mm-hmm. Did he ask me all? I I will. Uh, Not much. I will surreptitiously whack him on the back of his leg with my cane. Yep, you can <laughs> if you like. He'll go, oh, all right. No, yeah. and I won't, I'm not even looking at him. No, no. He'll keep going. <laughs> um, yes, you can see Harry through this sort of doorway. Mm-hmm. You should probably put your head in, for like to say. I wave, sort of give a motion. Does he want to come through? Oh, I think we're right. I, I was just telling these guys about Hornberg. If you've got anything that, if you've got any of the squashed artifacts to show them the extent of the damage we're talking about, because didn't you get sent a few twisted lumps of metal and whatever? Yeah, 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 I've got a few things. It's not urgent. You deal with that creature. Do you need me to do anything involving him? Not That's your apprentice, problem. the cyborg. Android. Android, you can call him that. Android. He's not really my apprentice. Um, no, whatever he is. Assistant. Nuisance. Problem. Junior co-worker. Junior co-worker. I, I don't, don't want people to think I'm responsible for him. That's probably um, a good plan. Because <laughs> he's going to get himself in trouble. But I suppose it's better. We can't have him out there being aggressively made in German at people. It would just confuse him. Um, yeah. Um, do you need me to... Can I help at all? I don't think so, no. He needs a bit of energy. He needs to be in a, a, a location. I think I might be able to replace a few parts, but... He needs basically an entire rebuild to stay alive, I think, and it might be a bit beyond what I really have, well, skill and time to do. So I put a call in. Yes, you're going to help him get hold of his original creators? I've, I've called Constantine, and I'm pretty sure he's originally caught the convention, but from the US, so that should be across the oceans, but I don't think we're going to find the original original. But, no. Uh, I put, yeah, like I said, called into the head of the convention for Europe, so yeah. hopefully she, when she calls me back, she'll tell me... Uh, so, yeah. I mean, you're, you're so master, so you're better connected than I am in that direction. So. But we think he was being used by um, someone else that's actually responsible for this whole bunch of stuff. The Nick in the... Um, How many other took, room? I've gone back to the dialogue. The people sorry. that took Tony. Uh, yeah, yeah, and nicking the, the stuff from Charlie. Wheels, yeah. We're going to store the sinning wheel. Yeah, Somewhere quite powerful. More secure. Stuff that, yeah. Yes. Um... It's just in Kenzie getting people killed for. What the? That artifact's not got a happy history. Doesn't it? It's in film, no. Uh, how old is it? It can't be that old. Oh, it's only about 20 years, but it's yeah. got an impressive body count for a 20 year old <laughs> artifact. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, but there's someone else out there who just wasn't there when we were there. But I think, I don't know, I'm assuming you wouldn't be told that. But anyway, I'd like to yeah see if we can get 971 awake enough that you can, might be able to pass them on. Anything. He knows. Okay, well, good luck with it. Let um, me know if you need anything. I can try and run a trace on any of the contestants you've got or something <coughs> like that. Well, I might ask... Uh, who'd be the better one to ask out of you on um, the 
the other guy. Um, Jeremy, would, uh, which one would be better? I'll just ask you two for reading his mind, maybe, because the might be might be locked off from him. Probably Jeremy. If he needs more of the rebalance of probabilities, I can help with that. Right. And if he's urgent, you'd be charging anything electrical, but you have your own means of doing that. Um, but yeah. Power sockets, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I can help with any entropy or anything like that that needs to Alright. If you've got falling apart components of in lives mm-hmm. together, it's something you useful skill. Well, I'll get him to stay when I ask Jeremy if he can. Uh... Yeah, that sounds like a good thing. Because I, th- I don't think he's like, I'll have all access to everything in it, so. Yeah. <laughs> but Jeremy would be better with the mind magic, though he appears to have made friends with a weird tiny typewriter. <laughs> Are you okay? Like I say, it doesn't do anything unless you give it energy, so. Um, and then it just spells random Shakespeare. Well, semi random. To be fair, I've heard of less useful uh, I've heard of less useful wonders. It's waiting for something, and I think it's just stalling for time until it gets the right kind of person, energy, or a month from now. But if you can get anything out of it, you know, it yeah, hurts. Got more, more power to him if you can. Right. Um, Harry will ask you if he's if you're right leaving him and Tony alone for a little bit just to have a chat. Tony's okay. Yeah, Tony's okay. So I just go into a bit more detail about class life and things, and if you go and see if Haven people are okay, because it's quite a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, you go back to your typewriter. You've asked it. Are you okay? I'm going to put a point of quintessence into it. And I'm going to try and use mind magic to use it as a relay. Okay. All right, so make a mind magic roll on difficulty five. You're putting a point of quintessence into it. You're asking if it's okay. Um, Have you repocketed your pocket water? Is it still on? No, I'm going to leave it next to it. Touching it, you know, physically. Jacob is successfully feeding 971 water and biscuits. You need to back home. Oh! Can you botch? Mm. Yeah? You can, but isn't that a 7? It's a 7 and 2 ones. Then you haven't got I say, the botch is if you get no successes. Ah! That is just quite a bad fail. Okay. The good news is you gave it some contestants, though. So what it does no, is... No, a point of willpower to pass. Or No, that would be counteractive, wouldn't it? Never mind. Um, willpower successes always pass. Normally you're supposed to claim before the roll, but... Sorry. That's fine then. Carry on. Right, okay. It's okay. Right, it proceeds to give you a uh, section from Richard III where they are lamenting what a terrible thing it is to be a prisoner. Mm. Someone's gone mad, locked away somewhere, remotely, away from everybody else, and now discussing being a prisoner. Okay. Well, this really likes you. Um... Yeah. Probably both. Right. Um, are you going to enlist these two's help, Adam? Or are you, what, are, what is your plan? Or are you just sort of... Well, I'm going to repair them against stable first. Okay. I, can, I, can, I can hold things and, and <laughs> yeah, my, my, my ability to apply pressure. Yeah, I have one point of medicine and two points of crafts, so my, my relevant knowledge is somewhat limited. <laughs> Colin, when you're walking back through... You catch a brief glimpse of your slightly bad-tempered avatar pointing at the puzzle box. I would go to the puzzle box. It's on the same end of the. It's on the same bench. Sure. But, what what sure. face is my avatar wearing at this point as I walk past? Because it, it kind of varies. It looks like the girl at this point. Okay. And then I'll definitely go over to the puzzle box. Not <laughs> to. I, I'm going to walk over. I'm going to pause That's really for a tricky, moment, that puzzle box. Because as I start typing, some it's appearing like the girl. Which of the stars that he's following me around is directing me towards this puzzle box? Uh, who knows? Who cares? I'm going to investigate the puzzle box. It might be interesting. Right. <laughs> She's pointing at the puzzle box. Okay. <laughs> Have you got like enigmas or any skills mm, like nope. that? <laughs> Well, that's a sort of really? mundane puzzle box roll. Um, I think muzzle. I think puzzle boxes are more wits than intelligence. Oh, that's good because I've got high wits. So. <laughs> and if you've got enigmas or anything remotely relevant, investigation, investigation, possible. I've got one point of investigation. Yeah, we'll let you have the one point of investigation. I think that's cool. Good. I don't need to actually have a roll on that. I've got all those things. <laughs> a pair of nines. Apparently oh. so. You found it. Right. Okay. Um. You could, right, so right away, it's magical, not just mechanical. 
Um, so you can look at it and go, yeah, that, that, I, I think I can see you what basic principle it's on, but it's clearly that somebody's been sodding with this um, to a greater or lesser extent. Um, but it, she's basically directing you to press one area on it. It's one of these ones where you can press lots of things, and do things go in and out, and nothing happens quite a lot of the time. So you sort of press the area that she's talking yeah. to press, and a, sec, a sort of little cube-shaped section drops down. And then she starts on the other side and press that in, and another cube section drops down that way. And then presses you that way, and another section drops in that way. Are you going to continue to press yeah. what she's telling you yeah. to press? Um, you don't actually want to make sense of this. It's either, it's either going to open or blow up in my face, yeah, yeah. depending on who it is. that one. <laughs> ah! Depending on who's directing it. Yeah. I just don't know. Oh, God. You probably also noticed the, there's Arabic writing on it as well. Oh, yeah, there is Arabic yeah. writing on it. I don't think your character, I think Arabic's one of the languages he took. It's it is not one of the characters, languages I took, and as far as I know, neither of my avatars that I'm aware of have a particular connection. Arabic, no. <laughs> I just so, need those languages so you might be able to read it. <laughs> two things happen slightly simultaneously. Yeah. Firstly, it gets really hot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the edge along which it got hot, I say there's this Arabic poem and then there's this single Hebrew elf. Mm-hmm. The bit edge along where it got hot, which is a different edge to the elf letter, there's now a room. A room. Yes, a room for endings that one of your Norse friends taught you. It's, it's, it, it's sort of outlaid in a sort of slightly brassy gold colour, same as the elf and same as the writing is. It looks mm. for all the world like it's never been there. It's never, it's always been there. You know, for a fact, it wasn't there two <laughs> seconds ago. No. Well, that's interesting. Hey. Yeah. When you've got a minute. Um, kind of busy. Yeah, when you've got a minute. At the moment, but yeah, I'll come over mm. in a second. Yeah, it'd be good to have a chat about this typewriter as well. Uh huh. Jacob is now around with you. Um, you go make sure they don't hurt themselves on anything. Um, I reckon if I do a strip back, you see here between the ribs, you can see into the sub processor. I reckon if I do a strip back on that, and I can get a, um, carefully, um, and I can get a transistor in there, I reckon I can get the programming. Right. I'm more concerned about, you know, the you know, general degeneration of his superstructure of it that holds it together and replacing that as, as much as I can before we start fiddling with probably what's the dangerous and, you know, like to go wrong well, bit. Well, all right then, I can do the welding to get that. I'm good at micro welds. Okay. But yeah, don't, don't mess with like, yeah, fundamental processes. And All right, I will valves. not mess with fundamental processes, valves, transistors, or capacitors until you get back. I will just finish the micro welding along the rip line, yeah? Yeah. Right. Because, yeah, don't fool me. Oh, don't well. erase his personality. Well, well <laughs> I don't think that he's got much personality <laughs> to erase. It's true. <laughs> All right. Are you right there, 971? Yes. All right. Tell them. Call out loudly if, it, if this seems to be heard to him at all, yeah? Crackers. What? The biscuit. Crackers. Yeah. It does say Quaker crackers on it. Yeah. From home. Yeah, quite probably. American crackers. Yeah, 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 we, we took them from... We, mm. They do not them. go very well with a cup of tea, I'll tell you that for nothing. You don't have anything else after that. <laughs> I should come over. Um, right. Uh, okay. Um, Jacob is singing a song to himself in sort of Hebrew while he welds. Okay. Uh, so why you were? <laughs> okay. So uh, how did you make that appear? Um, I followed instructions. I think. What kind of instructions? <laughs> there's only an Arabic poem on it. Uh, there's only an Arabic poem on it, but. Mm. Either my avatar or its twin that wants to kill me was directing me to press different parts of the box. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, that. Because we're standing where we're pretty much naked. You can hear the same thing. You can hear me. Sorry, old chap, but I hear you properly there. Did you Probably. just say your avatar or their uh, twin that wants to kill me? Yes. The twin. Very well. Sounds. 
It sounds like someone I would have rather met before the Germans dropped a, or possibly the British dropped a bomb, bomb on her head. Right. Alright, but so this avatar yeah. was someone else's because twin avatars in the air. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to hear about that. Sometimes they get split in two at some point and they still connect. Sure. Um, I've um, heard about it. Uh, um, yeah, suddenly that side got very hot and there's a. It got hot? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it I'm not going to make you take damage it. for it, but you've actually got a, like a scald line along your palm. Mm. It got hot. <laughs> right. It's not got hot. You're about to get experimented. <laughs> as as <laughs> Does it feel hot now? Oh, feels like it's cooling. It's a room meaning... Well, it's to do with endings. Right, well... People try to get into this force for the alarm a number of times. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't really tell how old the box is itself. Uh, the poem, if you don't know Arabic, I don't. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's about... Um, it's a, a really old poem, like, you know, 1500 years old sort of poem. Um about travelling far from home and it being dangerous and like, you know, careful on boats, that sort of thing. Um, you know, when, you know, the, the home's really nice, if you travel far away, you sure. might need to do it, but it's dangerous out there, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, from what I can translate. Um, it was just, the, the Italian resistance passages, but we don't really have any information where they go from, so we don't know where it came from originally. Um, mm. We've tried playing with it, we can't open it. Um, it's got a, unsurprisingly, uh, a static binding kind of resonance, uh, frequency. <laughs> so not, no shocks there. Uh, that little alpha letter is where I made, uh, I don't know if you know, but you can stick your energy into, um, objects and it makes them stronger, able to damage things that they don't really be able to damage, like spirits, sort mm-hmm. of things. Other dimensional entities, that kind of thing. It strengthens the, their inherent essence. And you can go through stuff you shouldn't be able to go through otherwise. We did, when we tried to drill doing that on that, that's it left that little mark there. It didn't damage it, but it just left a little letter. So you try to drill on it? Yeah. But, but in a power with, drill. With, with uh, a magic drill. A magic, like. magic power drill. Yeah. And, uh, and it left a, a, a letter sword. when it, when it sort of turned, okay. turned into it. You can see it's got a few burn marks up when other people have mm-hmm. tried. People have, I'm pretty sure people have tried various different other kind of magics, but that's the only one that we've tried that has had any effect on it. And now this. Suggesting, I don't know. It's trying to communicate, like I say. Mm. Elf is the beginning. Rune suggesting endings. A poem about traveling far from home. It's not suggesting anything to me yet. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, and I don't know yet why um, yeah, your avatar, um, I don't know the history of avatar as to why they might be interested or understand or know about it. No. Hmm. I can't give you any more than that on that one. Okay. I'll probably play with it anymore or work out anything else in about oh. it. You might be able to find anything else, but yeah. Probably spend a bit more time with it. Um, got a bit of an inkling that there's something bad in it from general feeling that people had around it. Um, well, it seemed to burn you, so that may be one indication that it's dangerous. Or it's just, you know, releasing energy. This is very interesting, I'll say, pointing at the typewriter. Yeah, we know a bit more about the typewriter. Seems to be a sad lady far away on the other end of this. No, is it a female? Right, okay. Um, like I said, we were pretty sure it was connected to some sort of prisoner, as I said, or someone else yeah. that's being held by the Germans. And being being shielded from speaking. mind magic. Mm-hmm. Um, their resonance, from what we can tell, because we think they're trapped, because it gives off a couple of kinds of uh, resonance. Mm-hmm. You've got um, a diamond one, which I think is the person probably being held, but some sort of wild spring flower kind of thing. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've got that at all. No, not yet. It's got wild flowers. Um, but you've also got like an entropic kind of claustrophobic, yeah, yeah. airless kind of thing. P- picked up on something similar. Um, if you want to use a uh, meta classification for resonance. Um, uh, that one, it's, it sort of talks to sleepers that it comes, had came, came across on the way to us. Um, it told them basically to, as you can see, it's sort of knocked together from various different safes and typewriters. Sure. And a few different ones. They all seem fairly mm-hmm. common German brands, so we mm-hmm. assume it's German manufacturing, someone's around German stuff, but oh, yeah, not sorry, some of the German stuff. Trapped um, in some sort of factory and made something that they could. 
Oh, yeah, or near a scrapyard or something. It could be a bunch of places or just, yeah. It's stuff that's still working. It could be old, dodgy stuff as well. It's badly made. It's someone that doesn't really know machining very well. Um, or doesn't have much resources on hand. Not even like, even no resources to make a better version of that. Um, but yeah, it was from Normandy Landings, from mm-hmm. the Resistance in Paris. Mm-hmm. As I said, it, it sort of kept on being passed on to, to everyone that took it, had an urge to pass on someone that would understand how old sleep as it came across. Okay. Then the enlightened people that came across, well, we just, it's just a thing. Hmm. Um, I got a real sense of sadness and guilt about the item itself. Really? The person on the other end had some sense of guilt attached to the object. Well, maybe, maybe just it's it's difficult reading minds through something and over a great distance. It's more of an impression mm-hmm. at this stage yeah. of the mind that created it. Mm. Well, there was the um, the point that they got either got a good understanding of English or basically the native English. Because I mean, the Shakespeare is pretty. Have you tried it with non-English speakers? Yeah. Do yeah. They, does it still do Shakespeare? Still does English yeah, Shakespeare. In English. Yeah. 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 It, it interacted with my stop my pocket watch. Yeah. The pocket watch uh, moved in time with the cadence mm-hmm. of the hammers in the time right. Oh, yeah. Momentarily. Hmm. But that's more activity I've seen from it. More structured activity that I've seen from it in a long time. Well, if you didn't put any energy in yourself, it's probably feeding on energy. Oh, I, I did. I did the second time. The first time. The first time was from my from my pocket watch, um, and, and once I knew right. you confirmed for me that that's it. It consumes quintessence. I decided mm-hmm. to try a little experiment myself. Um, as I said, hundreds of miles away, and there's some sort of shielding going on. Right. And something Harry just said made me wonder about premium. Do you have a location for hundreds of miles away? I was going to try something else with the gyro, if possible. Oh, that just gives it random rotations. Um, could, could could you get things working together? Probably you could try, but connecting these are very different kinds of things. Of course. Of course. Um, premium. Harry mentioned that it's uh, That'd be a good cage for a powerful maker. They had gathered, someone had gathered. I was leaving the room, so I didn't quite mm-hmm. catch all of it, although he did see the funny look on my face and tell me what it was. The, <coughs> the hermetic, the former hermetic who, whose former allies made, a, made that very fancy bullet to yes. kill him. He had stole a quantity of the material from the order. Mm. The, the 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 sense of direction that I got was somewhere in the kind of uh, French, German, Denmark, North Germany triangle kind of yeah, could even, area. Yeah, that was Roughly. further than Belgium. Yeah. but yeah, that over there somewhere. Yeah. It's just diff- difficult. My <laughs> my uh, correspondence. Not quite what it could be, mm-hmm. but, um, but definitely I felt a, a, so. Sorry, just asking you, Sam, for a moment. Mm-hmm. An active mind yes. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. there is yeah. definitely so not, something. Not just the, the the memory of a mind, but an active mind somewhere on the other end. But it's definitely a link. There's a link going on. Mm. So they're trying to actively send a message. Yeah, like I say, the two passages that have been typed out here. One is about. Uh, madness and isolation and the other is about uh, being imprisoned so they are clearly sending some sort of repetitive I don't know if you have any of the other typings from oh the yeah they're all store. pull out a file yeah, yeah they're, they're all, all file. Oh, the oh, oh, oh a file <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> with documents excellent I'm going to yeah list of questions like this, yeah. the, this in my, my boring sleeper side of accountant <laughs> comes out and I start <laughs> oh. going through the going through Three the papers oh you've, date you've dated time. and timed yeah. them excellent excellent yeah good from, record keeping from our, our records the other things we tell about it is that um it's looking for a certain kind of... It feels like it wants a certain kind of QNG into it. We've not been able to work out what that is, other than it's not particularly corrosive or 
destructive or negative, uh, if you might, if you like, mm-hmm. kind of energy. That doesn't seem to be the once. But on that, we're not quite sure. We think a certain kind of energy would give it a different, it would respond differently. And as I say, it's, it's had this sort of, it's got like an internal, like decay of uh, mm-hmm. primal energy in it. That's on a ca- kind of counting down. It looks like it's been counting down for like six months, but it's only got a month or so to go. I don't know what happens when that runs out, but maybe it just stops working. I don't know. It feels more deliberate than that. It's a bit more structured. More of a punctuation. Yeah, I can show you. Than a fade. Go to the file and show you a few graphs of how it's, okay. it's, how it's, how oh, it's yes. counting down. It's sort of stepped oh. um, in a way that you it would be kind of wouldn't be deliberate. It was just running out of energy. They're staring at paper. <laughs> grass. <laughs> it's got grass here. out. Puzzle box. <laughs> yeah, the avatar or not avatar, where it was, has disappeared. Okay. Well, um, sit here and play with the puzzle box. box a bit. Only other bit of note is well, other bit of note is that um, there were some blood traces of blood that we found in the keys, just from you know a proper scan of it. Um, can identify the blood that wasn't enough. A what of it? Uh, low level, like really small particle scan. Okay. Um. Um, if it's asked about itself or its maker, it tends to give out tragic, you know, Shakespeare's tragic. Yeah, I can see. If you, it's asked about what it does, it gives out history. So I'm guessing when it gave you Richard III, you asked about it, what it was for. I said, are you okay? Um, and if you ask it a really abstract question, like, why is blue blue? Or you can see that kind of thing. It tends to give Twelfth Night. Uh, appropriate. <laughs> Without fail, twelfth night. <laughs> if you look through the record, whenever they've asked anything, that's the only time you get a sp- obscure twelfth. That's the only time you get. We've been able to get a specific play from it. Hmm. So that's all my my sort of summary of my notes, which you can see in my full record. Oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm nodding. I'm listening, but I'm I'm looking <laughs> through. I, I've got a file for the puzzle box if you want as well. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should really get back to the notes of one. Sure. Uh, Let me know if I can help in any way. I'm probably just going to be... Well, once I'm stabilised in probably, I wouldn't mind anyone that that can have a go at trying to see if there's any data hidden about himself. So So we shall, I think we shall sort of... Within his... In his mind or in his sort of programming. Okay. Right. So we shall... So difference engineer or, you know, uh, Akashic kind of stuff. Or uh, Harry did say you, alternatively. Right, so we shall skip forward an hour or two, I think, at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, you continue to play with your items. Um, you can repeat some of his effects um, in terms of sure. certain plays and things. Yeah. And the Twelfth Night one is very repeatable. If you ask it anything nonsense <laughs> or abstract, it just gives you Twelfth Night. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm feeling that I'm the person who, invited, I'm the person who created it likes Twelfth Night or, or they doesn't, doesn't like Twelfth, Twelfth Night, Night. Mm-hmm. No. and doesn't like... Um, <laughs> doesn't like yeah. nonsense questions. Completely nonsense. <laughs> You're going to give me nonsense questions. You're going to get 12th night. Yeah. You're going to get 12th night. Yeah. <laughs> That'll teach you. <laughs> yeah. One of the things. In fact, actually, if you look at the card, it's almost like it's working backwards through 12th night as well. Um, just to give it even less coherency than it's actually got. Um, right. So, yes. Adam, you get the guy actual superstructure stabilised. You don't think he's going to imminently die of anything. Right. Good. Um, you managed to identify the maker's mark. His master was one of the technocratic envoys that was sent to Hornberg. Right. So, he is almost definitely dead. Mm. Yes. Probably he dead is the, is the best we can Somewhere yeah. else. Well, if... Well, Somewhere else. In the meantime, Jacob will find you one of the things that Harry suggested. Mm-hmm. And it's a piece of metal that they think came from somebody's... Um, one of the majors went was a bit of an old school guy who used a sword. It literally... It, and it, it, it's like this, you know, super impressive welded pattern steel. It looks like it's been squashed and exploded simultaneously. It seems very unlikely anything except for maybe a master of forces made it out of there alive. Um, and though there were a couple of them there, there's never been any reports. So, um, yeah, it, it looks, it doesn't look very survivable, whatever <laughs> happened at Hornberg. Um, yes, so that's where you are with that. So Adam will get him stable. Um, yes, he's actually, yeah, once you get things sorted, it's all a mix of, the fleshy bits are kind of rotting, but they were rotting because all the mechanical bits are broken. So once you get the mechanical bits back up again, right. it's actually not too bad. If you go and borrow some antibiotics and stuff from the medics. But I assume he's still he's still alive. So. Yeah, 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 he's still alive. If you go and borrow some antibiotics and So when you say medics, rotting, you mean like gangrenous? And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's bits, yeah, there are bits of gangrene and stuff. But yeah, if you go and avail yourself of some penicillin from the medics, right. um, once you've got the metal sorted, you think that will probably clear up. Mm-hmm. Um, you, as I said, get a nice tour of Shakespeare plays. Um, the puzzle box, the avatar doesn't return. 
Okay. Well, I'm kind of not expecting it to. By because... the, yeah, but by the end of it, I mean, you're good at language. Maybe it's just a, you know, maybe all this time, maybe you just had a gift for linguistics and you never knew until you started travelling. Um, but you start to, you think you understand the Arabic. And he's right. I mean, being able, it was a bit of a prosaic description of the poem. The poem is a little more artistic and graceful. But it's in the fire. The, the, the <laughs> the I mean, you do have that to look at. But the gist of it is, it's about that wherever you may travel, you come back home, and that that is very important, and that sense of belonging that you get from that. And that at times the world may force you to go far, it's important to come back. Um, but, yeah, you think you can kind of see that now. You can almost sort of see what letters and words, you can almost hear it, you feel, all in your mind's eye. Like when you do know what how it sort of how a language sounds and you're trying to sort of mentally sound it out in your head, you can kind of feel that and you've not really had any input. It looks like Jacob did the translation, so presumably he speaks Arabic. Um, but um, he mostly hangs around being irritating, basically most of the time. If you look um, at the file, it does also say that the letters aren't actually there on like proper matter scans. Yeah, the letters aren't there on matter scans. <laughs> not the elf, not the thing, or the poem. You just if you matter if you attempt to use matter to sense it, you sure. sense there's sheer sides. There's nothing there. I, I probably actually would have been poking around a bit with magic as well. Yeah. I don't have matter, but this seems like it's good. It's a good thing to learn. Then. <laughs> a good way to practice as any. There we go. Um, so paradigm, <laughs> paradigm bizarre Arabic puzzle boxes would be tricky. Um, <laughs> so, no, not quite the, the way I was. So. No, no <laughs> going with that. Um, right. I'm going to need a bit of input from someone who actually knows matters. Yes. As well. If anyone checks in on Harry and Tony, um, yeah, I'll Harry head back over there after a little bit. Yeah, Harry, this puzzle box. They seem to be getting on well. Harry's moved over to sit next to him, and he's showing him a series of photographs. It looks like. Um, and a few sort of portraits and th- a few little pictures of portraits and things. Um, and he looks like he's trying to talk about this previous mage's life a bit for him. It sounds like Harry didn't know him, but only when he was a very young apprentice, because they only overlap for a couple of years. Um, Harry clearly was, you know, actually was really impressed by this guy and seemed to really like him by the way he's talking about him. Um, and it is implied that he was... Uh, Basically, he was killed, um, but he was killed destroying one of the last infantry to sort of make their home in France, basically. Um, and he took them out with him, basically. So he was killed in a very, very, because obviously Tony's been having these slightly disturbing dreams about it. Mm. It was obviously a very nasty fashion, but it was a very heroic fashion. Mm-hmm. And they were, and also Tony doesn't seem to have got it, but if anyone sort of tries to overhear them for a while, you get the sense that sort of reading between the lines, particularly as it had been sort of 25 years, the Hermetics were starting to get a little bit worried that that avatar was going to come back. Right. Um, whether some sort of damage had been done to it, or the Nefandi had actually destroyed it or injured it, or something like that. Or worse. Oh, or yeah. worse, yeah. yeah. But the fact is, it's come back it. and it does not appear at all twisted. To say all of you that have been near him, it's still got this fantastic sort of golden honey yeah. resonance. Does not have the sense of um, no, no, not at all. But the Hermetics it's were clearly all... starting to get a bit worried in the intervening years. Um, though also they kind of, you know, they they literally have been. Set, you know, before the war and things got serious, they'd been setting, you know, this, this guy's associates and set out like, you know, all sorts of little traps all over the world to try and catch little twinges of these these particularly rare avatars. Mm. And they then proceeded to reincarnate literally on their doorstep. I think some of them felt a little bit silly about it. <laughs> um, but yes, so the Tony is very valuable. Um, by the sounds of it, he is going to, and because obviously you would know, being a hermetic, you probably wouldn't, but Abe would because he'd heard about it. The Hermetics have a massive chantry in Warwick, and they have had it for quite a lot of years. Um, and it's very nice out there. It sounds like he's getting Tony used to the idea that he and his mum and sister might be evacuated to near Warwick. And yeah. they'll find him a nice house for his mum and his sister and him to live in and all this kind of stuff. And he's showing him some pictures of Warwick Castle as well, and talking about how they can go there. And he's showing him the cricket team. Lovely castle. There. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. So he seems to be trying to get him used to the idea that we might be... It's a lovely castle. Yeah. yeah. It's a very nice castle, but yeah. he is, try- yeah. he is trying yeah, to get him used to... By Warwick it's, a prop- prop- <laughs> it's a proper castle. It, it, well. It's a castle like kids draw castles, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It's got big battlements and yeah, turrets. Yeah. And when you're a kid and you draw a castle, a moat that's what, and yeah, get, that's what know, Warwick Castle looks like. And everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, it looks like he's trying to get him used to the idea that they might be trying to move the family. And turns out there's an elderly auntie somewhere he's very worried about, and he also wants to make sure that his dad will know where they've gone. And he's like, "Do not worry, your dad will definitely know where you've gone. I need to talk to people about your dad. We might even try and recall him." Um, so he's definitely talk, seeming to be wanting to send the boy away and not suddenly conscript him into. The no, front he line. sounds like he wants to send him to Warwick. 
which is a say a super safe hermetic holding. Um, it, yeah, it's probably somewhere where where the the V two rockets will coincidentally happen to not hit. Not hit. No. <laughs> yeah. Even funny, if they funny did that. Pick a few bits around Stratford, they will never hit around where the hermetics are in Warwick. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, they've been there for about fourteen hundred years, give or take, at this point, so they're pretty well bedded in yeah, the hermetics yeah. at Warwick now, even by their own standards. Um, yes, so that will happen. I so say you do manage to get nine seven one, as I said, vaguely working again. Mm-hmm. I'd like mm-hmm. to talk to Howie about the um, the prospect of learning a bit from him. Uh, yeah, Howie is pretty open-minded on that one. He says, despite the you know being a um, <clears throat> his specialist in his training with forces, matter, and entropy. Mm. Uh, actually, these days, if anything, he thinks of matter as his sort of preferred sphere, really, um, in which he knows is unusual for his tradition, but. He feels matter to be what he's best at. He's happy to talk to you about forces, but he feels matter to be the one he's got the best understanding of. Yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah. We've sort of explained that his uh, his avatar seems to be quite keen for him to have a, a grounding in, in in all the spheres. So. Yeah, Harry's like in a non wartime situation. I would obviously, you know, make you wait for a while and write off to people, but we haven't got that luxury. So he says he'd be happy to talk to you about that at some point. Um, you get a call. Cool back right. from Mary, mm-hmm. um, the gist of which is confirming to you that the guy who made him is dead. Um, she also confirms that she believes some of these were taken to Hornburg. Uh, okay. But she doesn't know for definite. Um, there are cross convention projects in the work convention and the progenitors. No. Um, they were mostly made in New York and um, state um, from about 29 to about, well, relatively recently, sort of 39. But production's obviously stopped because the progenitor was also filled with Hornburg. Right. Um, with that in mind, she will happily take him back, particularly if you don't think you can keep him alive. Um, she's going to send, she's going to talk to the difference engineers and get them to send someone over to get, have a look look through and help you as well right um and she thinks um she is not certain but she is clearly worried that progenitor was kind of on the last warning <laughs> and had they not volunteered to go to hornburg then they may have been off their last warning. Right. um and um yeah the was kind of on their last warning officially all of this is created tissue she has a suspicion they were using people as the base. I was going to say, it, looks, it seemed like a person to me. Mm. She thinks they're, officially they're not, but she thinks right. they're people. Um, but yeah, she can find a lab that he can exist in, if that is needed. She can't find you as original maker because they're Hornburg. dead. Yeah, because Hornburg, basically. Uh, well, he could probably could have lived there for a while, it's kind of up to him. But I think that he'd probably do better in you know, and more people would know what they're doing and less distracted by other things. She'll make some inquiries and see if the guy actually trained quite a few students. She'll see if any of them are still about. But I mean, but she sounds a bit reluctant to get in touch with any of the progenitors. But but he seems, you know, cognizant, safe. Well, then yeah, he can kind of make his own. That's gonna say it's kind of it, yeah, it's kind of up to him what he wants, isn't it? Do you, anywhere that he might go, do you think he'll be, you know, allowed to do whatever he wants? If I have a say in it, yes. If other people do, no. The difficulty is going to be he's going to struggle to survive outside of a lab. Well, yeah. So the main choice he might get is whose lab. Well, yeah. That might be the best choice we can give him. Yeah. Yeah. But, but she'll send someone from the gym to say because they're nearer. Yeah, no, we're not at the stage where we can, yeah, not allow people like him to no. wander around freely. That's not good for them. Well, she doesn't think we get out. And, yeah, she doesn't think we can undo what, the, what her colleague did. So. Nah, there's no way you can go back on that. The pattern's been altered, it's not. No, it's too fundamental. Even with all the quintessence in the world, she doesn't think she can do that. No, no, he's going to have to live in a confined environment most of the time, but yeah, can you offer a better place than here, do you think? Or? But he could come to her lab, which is up in Yorkshire somewhere. Right. Um, but she could see if any of the Americans had taken and he could get back home. But, but you know. That's going to be a couple of weeks of inquiries. Yeah. Alright. Last thing we want to do. Right. right, 
to have a couple of hours peace and quiet, so you talk to this thing, and yeah, and you start to get a sense. And you think also you can start to, I say, this sort of wildflower resonance that Adam talked about, you can mm-hmm. see a bit of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, as I said, coming from sort of upper middle class background, I'm assuming you grew up somewhere relatively nice and things like that, you would almost say British wildflowers as well. Okay. You think whoever this is probably grew up here. Okay. Mm. It smells like hollyhock and snapdragons and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Um, right, so a couple of hours pass. You can talk to. The, you can now several cups of tea later. Several cups of tea later. You have looked at various things. Um, nine five seven nine seven one is not dead, crucially, and it's likely to now stay that way. Do you want me to uh, do yeah. that thing? If that's all right, nine seven one. If we'd like to have a look at. What information stored where? Because I want to he reconnect. Still looks a bloody mess. I should point out, and the arm that had to come off is still off. Yeah, no, re- replace but it. That only to... smells. It probably smells better, and also okay. having worked on by you guys for a while, most of what I spent he smells of is iodine at this point. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. To clean various. Things. Just all over him. Yeah, uh, he mostly smells of iodine. Yeah, nine to one. The arm. We're gonna have to um, that remake one. That's a, a bit of a long term project. I reckon I can do it, but it's gonna take some time. Uh, but the problem is, is there's loads of they're sort of uh, kind of a computer, you know, that is mm-hmm. system. Storage. I've heard, I've heard of it. And there's computer system storage of information inside inside him, but it's it's kind of only partially connected to the, the organic parts, and some of the organic parts aren't entirely connected properly. And we could probably reconnect like them all. Parts of brain. His information systems aren't connecting, and some of them are biological, and some of them are mechanical. And they're okay. not connected to what's actually functioning currently. But my concern is is that whoever we was dealing with him before has sort of played with some of those different bits and we probably shouldn't reconnect those because they might try and take over or do damage. So what I'd like to do is know what's on different bits and what's held them and if there's any bit that we shouldn't reconnect. Okay, so if there's something with some really bad resonance or... If, you know, or some sort of set or... of kill orders, kill everyone yeah, around yeah, you, that sure, kind of thing. Sure, sure. I or... just may not recognise the specific orders, <sighs> you know. It will start volunteering itself because he can. Sixty-eight mm-hmm. percent uh, biological memory integrity. Fifty-four uh, percent mm-hmm. uh, additional memory integrity. Um, uh, um. Estimated losses. Thirty percent unrecoverable with minimal. So we might not be able to get any of it back, but I'd like to recon- try reconnecting different bits of it. But some of it, yeah, might also just be generally corroded and best left, as it were, or removed. Um, I'm, oh, I can reconnect well. the physical, like the mechanical, non-living parts. We'll probably need to get someone else in to do either that uh, Canadian or someone else that knows what they're doing with living stuff. Do you, can you reconnect stuff? No. You can try and work out what you point out. What's broken? I can, I can start to get my head around what's going on, but yeah. Can I probe his mind then, or and find the different facets of it? Yes. And try. I was hoping to do something similar. Figure out with an entropy overlay to try and figure out if anything's going to go forward and hold me wrong. That sounds good. Both make your sensory effects then. Um, Also, while you're getting things up, people say also because that's correspondence. Also. Mm-hmm. Martin. Is it? This is 971, so yeah. Martin. Martin? My name. Oh, Martin. right, mine. Oh, Martin. Marty. Hi, Martin. Martin. Okay. Nice to meet you. I'm Jeremy. Rufus. Could you hold this? And I'll hand in my stopwatch. My uh, pocket watch. Stopwatch. Pocket watch. Right. So... DM is reaching for dice. So, Marty, we... Carry on, Matt, carry on. <laughs> oh, dear. So, Shit. <laughs> Marty, we... I've talked to the people that made you. Oh. We don't know if officially you're... What um, is the difficulty? Sensor is four. Four, and do tens explode? Not at this stage, okay. no. Three. When you get back, you can special to the end. Three and one. Yay! <laughs> Both yeah. maximal successes. <laughs> right, Adam was in his sentence. And I, I was, I was just going to talk to him about stuff, cause keeping his mind yeah. active while they're doing this probably helps. Um, I've talked to the people that made you. Um, they officially were just all entirely created by Dead. them. You may have been, yeah, previously deceased or and or subject taken to the streets because some of these they're people dead. went. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, they were dead. They're like were you at Hornburg? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Um, but yeah. Um, Near. 
Critical Never. central server, uh, servo relay fail, yeah. uh, 17 miles from target. Left ah. behind. It's unfortunate. But yeah, um, right. I really want to know what happened at Hornburg, so I'm probably going to try and, at some next bit, <laughs> try and delve into that. See, yeah. Delve but into yeah, that. Um, All dead. But yeah, we don't quite know if you've got family or anything like that. You could stay here, but my skills are, you know, I like to think pretty good, but they're probably rough, a bit rough and ready. And mine is to perfect working order. We could send you to someone that could get into good working order, or we could, uh, and in a couple of weeks, we could probably get sent back to the US to someone back there that again could look up, that, you know, could look after you. But unfortunately, because you're so advanced technology, you can't really work out in the field, as you said, servos fail on that kind of thing for very long. You require a lot of energy to keep going out there without falling apart. You need to think. Yeah, I'm just giving you options. Yes, you do need to think. Think is good. Think some more. <laughs> right, okay, so... Look into his eyes. Mind stuff. So, <laughs> firstly, there is only one mind which is still up here, right. which is an organic messy bit. However, um, that has been wired into something extremely complex based near the back of sort of back from his solar plexus okay. towards where your spine is. Yep. So in other words, probably the centre of mass bits and the stuff sure. around it. Um, that has... Um, okay, so your character is a recent experience of mine, so obviously we think with what's here, mm-hmm. but you do stuff sometimes just because your spine touches. So yep. if you put your hand on something hot, you pull it away yeah. without yeah. it going Autonomic. through your brain. Exactly. Yeah. It's almost like they've tried to really strengthen that. Uh, yeah. So things like his reflexes and... Oh, even His stuff wiring like, is yeah, much more Or even more stuff like advanced. calculating a drop before he jumps off it and all that kind of stuff. Okay. They move to down here. But it is processor, um, and though it does have memory storage, it's memory to do those operations, not his own memory, if that okay. makes sense. Okay. So he's sort of so it's thinking... it's like a super advanced muscle memory yeah, kind basically. of... Yeah, basically. That's what someone was trying central, to do. Central... Yeah, okay. like a super, sort of really super, super soldier, tough autonomous yeah. memory, muscle memory type thing. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's not a mind. You're not really a programmer, so you can't say a great deal beyond that. Yeah. But it's not. He's not thinking. I've got enigmas and investigation, yeah. if that helps. But yeah. I know nothing about computers. So. He can. He can think with that bit, but you think only for physical things. And reflexively. Probably. Yeah, and reflexively yeah. for the most part. So the bit that's doing the processing is up here still. Oh. Hmm. Colin, you were doing similar sorts Some of things. things. With a hint of entropy, of is there anything we really shouldn't reconnect? <clears throat> Again, thinking with up here, less so within here. Um, not quite in quite as much detail as Pete, though. I've already told Pete, so do you have a, yeah, similar. Okay. Uh, approximate yourself a yeah. one success level of understanding of that. Um, <laughs> but All of it! <laughs> unless Pete tells that. you, then it yeah. doesn't matter. I'm you going to, then I will talking shortly. while he's doing yeah. it, then everyone will know yeah. that. Um, but you think, um, from the entropy viewpoint, um, firstly, there's all sorts of slight weak points in there. I mean, obviously, him and Jacob have been welding things and stuff, but it, there's micro fractures in the superstructure and stuff, because entropy will tell you where things are broken. Yeah. Um, however, you think the, the main thing that worries you is somewhere around this solar plexus sort of mini reflexive brain, mm. there's some sort of other metal components around there. Again, you're not really a mechanic, but one of no. those metal components is giving you the heebie-jeebies. It's not good. There's like four in a row, and that no. one on the left is wrong. Just really okay. wrong. You think, well, they've, do you honestly think it needs it out? I will yeah. explain this to A. <laughs> yeah, they've enhanced his muscle memory. That part of the mind which is reflexive and or, you know, not under your control. Yeah. So breathing and Jumping and pulling your hand back from a burning puzzle box, uh-huh. uh, that kind of thing. You have signal that doesn't jump to the brain; it just sort of jumps to the spine and back. Yeah, and it's actually in in the centre mass of the body near the spine. That's some kind of yeah. You you and I have no idea about all of your gizmos and thingamabobs. So. Around that, there were a number of metallic pieces, yeah. and the cylindrical. Mm, Leftmost one, something's not right with it. Possibly right. needs to be removed. Okay. Like really. Like soon. But yeah, I know that's where the main processing bit was because Jacob wanted to just play with it earlier. Yep, yep, yep. I saw my processor. It's he, all like, most of it. It probably needs the transistor. The thinking's up the top. It's a barrel of four all star transistors. They're yeah. not that in keeping with the rest of the tech. They might all be bad, to be honest. Um, later modifications. giving me the sense of. 
you know, it's properly it's like almost damage. you know when you feel a fever coming on and everything starts to go pins and needles that sort yeah. of bad. Well, yeah. we'll break all its connections then around, around it, and we'll move that on and have a look. And we might yeah. take them all out and replace them because they're simple enough stuff that that that's type of part that we can just replace, to be honest. And they're not embedded too far into the biological part that <clears> we need to get surgeons or anything. Um, we should be able to just have a go at doing that here pretty successfully. Um, well, yeah, thanks for that. Do you think that there's nothing, there's no commands or anything else dodgy? So we should. It didn't uh, look like anything though that was that sort of processing, no. Uh, my exp- I have no experience with com- computers, so mm. I. But I would like to discuss. For you, a computer is a person who does. Oh yeah, no, I know, I know. <laughs> but I know he's meaning something else. So yeah. I'm. I'm um, um. Actually, one thing we'll say both with mind scan is, um, he is probably now more compass mentis than he's been at any point in the last eighteen months. Um, it looks like it was probably a mixture of like actual biological weakness from like a million infections. Sure. But also potentially this other bad and things you don't. His memories of the last sort of eighteen months are very patchy. When and Even when he said delving into the when he said my name is Martin, did he like attach that to him as an identity, or was it like oh I found a memory file that says my name is Martin? No, no, no. I think it was just his first time he's been able to think clearly okay. in a while. Right. Um, it, 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 I mean, when you start to let's say, if you're, if you're about to be viewed it, but it very fever dream is what it seems sure. like. It wasn't, yeah. Well, when he I, starts talking about the big Hornberg thing, I want to actually. Okay, if you're going to ask him questions, he will. Level try three. My... No, I'm just going to go in and read his mind. <laughs> okay, right. So you do that. Everyone else is yes, looking at him. Do you want to try and get into the sort of Jacob's like, I will tell you, I'm all over the. As far as the information. The data sense is concerned. We are getting someone over from one of the difference engineers that should be able to clear up and make sure. So okay. I won't reconnect those quite until they get here and for sure nothing's in there. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take out that process if you think there's something bad about it. If you keep an eye out as well, make sure that it doesn't spread while we're trying to cut it out. We'll try and isolate as much as we can before we cut it out, but just in case there's something, I don't know, toxin. I know there's not an explosive or anything else like that that I could take, but there could be something a bit more subtle. I've missed. Right. One success. Okay. Difficulty so, six, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, he remembers being in a large convoy of army vehicles heading to this location. Mm-hmm. Um, there has been combat to get here, definitely. Um, he remembers engaging um Nazi soldiers. Mm-hmm. Um, it appears there are three of them that are like him, him and two colleagues, if okay. you like. Um, and they are here as bodyguards to this mage who he actually has quite you know, not fond members, but, you know, a commander he respected, Okay. if that makes sense. Yep. Um, and they are there with him. Um, then there is gunfire ahead. The front truck appears to have come across some form of roadblock. Mm-hmm. He I'm and his, just, I'm, I'm saying this to yeah, you guys as it's happening. Sort of quietly. So. He and the two other guys jump out the back of the lorry, run around towards the front lorry. And, I mean, there are... The other mage, well, you think this is a convoy of other mages. Some of them mm-hmm. have acolytes and soldiers and things with them, so there sure. are other people engaging. Yeah. But there is. But their one is the only one that's got the cybernetic. Yeah, people, as, well, so. well, as far as he knows. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, sure. Yeah. Um, these three run out and run. Um, when he remembers running, we're talking like really fast and really strong and sure. really sort of superhuman levels of speed and sort of mm-hmm. endurance. Also, nothing seems to hurt. There's no memories of anything hurting. Um, Do you mean as in like he's now, or he gets shot and it doesn't hurt? Uh, he certainly takes at least two nasty blows to the arm and he has no recollection. Okay. He's certainly hurting now because he read his mind in the cellar. Sure. But... And yes, when he was shot in the leg, he wasn't happy. No. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> at the time, he doesn't even remember noticing them. That he's powered up. Yeah. Something yeah. informs him that there, there's no structural damage and he just carries on. Mm-hmm. Um, however, there is, so there's, at this roadblock there are soldiers again, but various other people are engaging them, um, including him. However, he then sees at the back an older woman in a very dark red dress, um, who is staring at everybody. Um, he runs at her. Right. Because he's convinced she is in charge, as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he feel um, she raises her hand to him and does this sort of motion, and he feels like, all of the central sort of spinal column weight has just gone out of him. Yeah. And he crashes on the floor. Um, He sees her retreating. His side do manage to take over the roadblock. Mm -hmm. 
the guy he was with comes to him and they um seems to have things that plug into some ports somewhere and he's looking at things on like a little it's like, it looks almost like a you know you're not technical but you've seen people look at watts and things on oh yeah, yeah it's like a little multimeter little needle, yeah, going, yeah. Little needle multimeter he's got going yeah. um and um he and a couple of the wounded human allied soldiers are left behind and they said that they will come from on the way back <laughs> What he then sees for the rest of that night is crazy, crazy lights in the sky sure. a couple of kilometres distance. Yeah. And then a huge orange mushroom cloud. Blimey. Very mind we're at a point where people have not really seen a mushroom cloud. Sure, yeah. But Sorry. it doesn't look normal. <laughs> yeah. Manhattan Project. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, none of you are yes, Manhattan Project. And can I actually see that mushroom. through his mind's eye? Yeah. I think how big an explosion you need to generate a mushroom cloud because it's nothing to do with it being what it is, it's just the amount of heat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's just vast. Yeah. yeah. Mushroom cloud. Oh, Orange mushroom cloud. Then is when That's things start explosion. getting squiffy. Uh, he seems to start losing time and having sort of lapses. Right. Um, at one point, the two human soldiers are trying to drag him somewhere, but I right. think they have to give up because it's too heavy. Okay. Um, and then he's been bundled into some form of van and he thinks he's been, almost like he's been rolled up in something or wrapped up in something. Mm-hmm. Um, and he remembers finding it very difficult to breathe. And then it all becomes very, very strange. Okay. Um, there's vague memories. You think you see a face and then you think you see a woman crying. Not the same woman from the other, but another one, a younger woman. Um, but then you see this man's face over and over, which you, you're clearly very afraid of. And then there's dark, and then there's what sounds like water noises, like he's in a ship or something. Okay. And there's another man there, another presence there. It's not the same, but he, by that point, he's not seeing very clearly. Uh-huh. Looks youngish. That's about as you go, and he's got brown hair. Right. Um, and then, yeah, sort of patchy things, and lots and lots of lemon drops and pear drops. Oh. Which are the sweeties with some yeah, amount of yeah. contestants in that the sky was feeding him. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's all very patchy after Horror Mall, basically. Yeah. What does the man look like? What, the one he's with or the, the one he's terrified of? No, the earlier one, yeah. Yeah, you can... I presume you can't draw because you could try to draw or do some early photo I will just, just try and write describe... A good yeah, yeah, I'll write, it, I'll write down a description. So he's an older guy, he's in his late 50s, he's got very steel grey hair... Clean shaven, very square jaw. Looks like he's been outside a lot. Very brown skin. Um, the guy is very afraid of him. Um, uh, certainly, he has tried to do things to him that has hurt a great deal, and he thinks he's hurting other people. And that seems to make Marty quite cross. Is the knowledge that there are other people suffering and he can't get them to help them. He almost minds that more than it hurting himself. Um, when you said. The, there was the feeling of a woman crying. Yes. Do I get any sense of familiarity, familiarity of British bit, flowers? Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, he remembers her quite kindly, but virtually nothing else. Sure. Um, but yeah, this 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 individual, yes, you say, steel grey hair, been outside a lot, very square jaw, very clean shaven. Um, also, uh, I Harry, get the feeling that he might have a bullet with his name on it yeah. in the other room. Also, Harry. the only person that spoke English to him at any point was the crying lady. Uh, okay. Um, the other guy either didn't Proper want to English. or didn't feel the need to. Yes, English. Not Queen's English. Yes, English, not American. Um, but he does, That's Jeremy He's talking. not even certain it was all German either. He remembers hearing a couple of other languages. He thinks there were different people from different places. Okay. Lots of places. Yeah. Um. Okay, I am going to, at some point, ask Harry if that description fits the person. Um, he, th- that would be the right age, right hair colour. Um, he wasn't that outdoorsy, so that's a bit odd. But I don't know, maybe it's it near an orange mushroom cloud and got a bit of a tan. A bit tan, possibly. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know, but he thinks he says that that would be coherent with that. That'd be consistent with that man. Yeah. And then so again, I've not met him personally. I've only ever seen. I've seen intel, but I've not met him. And I'm probably going to be quiet for a bit, having seen that, like, through his eyes, and have a cup of tea and sit there just sort of just staring. Yeah, just... He's you know, wield such power to break men's minds and to tear the world asunder. It's... We must stop them. Well, don't worry, Jeremy, we'll get it down. Well, like I said, we're moving these transistors. Mm. 
Right. Um, okay, and you're helping, aren't you? You're trying to keep a track on this yeah. dodgy one. So these are transistors. They're about this big, and they're a sort of glass tube. They've got sort of wiring in them. Mm -hmm. um, these are German manufactured. You recognise them. Um, you have boxes of their British or American equivalents if you want. It's not mm -hmm. going to be an industry straight spot, probably. Um, if anything, you probably think the you probably, well, you think the British made part is the better one, mm -hmm. but the German is definitely inferior to the American or the British one. Mm -hmm. um, and this is this isn't even like the best one the German could do. Seems a bit ridiculous to be given like the highest tech Android in the entire world and then put substandard transistors in it. But, but this looks like a recent addition, as it were. You think there are always transistors there that someone has replaced them, whether that was with purpose or just because they were broken, you're not sure. Mm -hmm. um, however, the one that he's worried about looks exactly like all the others, but it's got a rune scrawled on it. And as you hold mm -hmm. it, you get that same... Well, you're going to puke. <laughs> almost like that when you start to realise hang on I'm ill yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know you can feel like sort of pinpricks of heat on your skin and mm -hmm. yeah and yeah a little bit like you might be ill <laughs> <laughs> or we'll put it in something so I don't have to touch it well I, I thought you might want to look at the room but I will have a look at the room <laughs> um, the rune is most commonly associated with God Loki mm. in the Norse pantheon Oh shit. <laughs> fire. Fire can be had, it's an etherite laboratory. No, no, no. Oh, Loki. Loki. Oh, Loki. Loki, yes, yes, fire. Fire. <laughs> yes, yes, fire in that. I thought oh, you were yeah. going to try and get rid of it. Yeah. So, yeah, fire in like, transistors. It's yes. in a bucket and it's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that is also possible. But yeah, fire. Um, but yeah, nasty, nasty, ill resonance. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> a very slight edge of um, cold as well. As in the temperature rather than the illness in this instance. Yeah, cold and sickly. If you had to put a resonance term, that's mm. what you would use. Okay, well, I'll put that to one side and suggest that, well, you do what you want with it because whatever, but I'll, I'll tell you what I've. You just seem to know about rooms, so <laughs> I thought, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's the room associated with Loki, with the. Normally associated with fire, but I'm getting a sense of cold off that. But it's also unpleasant truth still. So, wasn't he actually a nice giant, or was he one of the other ones? I never remember if he was Joe Sinning one of the other ones. It depends which variation which... you're reading. <laughs> yes, what, which interpretation <laughs> your guys <laughs> followed that taught you it. It's up to you. <laughs> but yeah, he is a fire god, earthquakes. Although that's more him being tied up somewhere and trying to break through. Um, but the sense I'm getting off it is is illness, disease, infection. You certainly be better off with it, not in it. <laughs> seems like a, yeah, like I say, I'm pretty sure this was a place to keep him going. It seems a bit an odd choice. To, uh, I guess if you it's your resonance, then it's your resonance, isn't it? If you're going to put energy in it to stick it in him, then and if you're doing it, you just kind of normally leave your little marks on it. It's, yeah, it's, it's a poor choice. I mean, if you've got a resonance, you know, you've got a frequency of disease in the end, you start making parts. And, yeah. Anyway. Hmm. Well, taking it out, definitely, I'll help them. <coughs> right. should replace the parts and I'm going to work for a different engineer. Then. Right. So, um, the, the afternoon continues to pass. You are invited to the. Once we back, and I'll mention this to Howie, we think that the person actually responsible for all this was going to be returning that evening yep. and our Canadian colleague was there trying to set up lay a, some form of cunning mounted trap some form of trap <laughs> <laughs> like from there to help <laughs> probably involves a large gun spring it. <laughs> which is another reason I wouldn't mind having a gun that isn't German um, someone will actually sort that out for you Harry goes to talk to well get someone to come and talk to him and he sorts that out for you um, Harry um well, I'll come to ask you probably first. <clears throat> Harry says, um, current plan is to move, is to get the boys' family up here, I think, put them all in a car with someone from Warwick that's come down specifically to pick them up. Right. And take them. Well, I don't trust them not having a maid with them until we've got them in the sanctum at Warwick nice and safe. But to the other guy who's, yeah, doing all this is. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm going to wait for on the Warwick mate. If, if we can continue to borrow your common room for a bit. Yeah. And if you don't mind it containing his mother, sister, sister, and I believe his aunt Lila. For a couple of, that's what right. I mean, but for a couple of hours, um, and then we'll ship them all out to Warwick. But I'm going to get one of the mages mm -hmm. from Warwick to come down and do a direct handover from us. I don't, I don't think we can risk putting them in a car mm -hmm. without yeah. proper. Do they safety. go wild like this? 
Awesome. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not really into flowers. Um, so that's our current plan. I will, we're going to do it tonight because I can't wait a very long time away from my own sanctum, but I think we need him out of the area at least until we've worked out what this threat is. And whether there's any particular, I mean, they could just solely be interested in Tony because he's got a very powerful avatar and has potentially be a very powerful mage. If you get them young, mm-hmm. you can properly ruin them. Um, or there might be some significance to his past life and in fact his previous incarnation for the fan. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but I don't want to risk him without properly training people around him just yet. Once he's in the Sanctum area at Warwick, there's a couple of houses within the grounds. I can find someone to put him in his family. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I don't particularly want him going into a hellish grief spiral, um, I am I'm making contacts and we're going to try and get his father recalled. Okay. He's with the landing parties right. at the moment, but I'm going to try and get him recalled to the UK and get him shipped to Warwick as well. Um, because I don't want the kid breaking when he's this new into his power. Um, particularly so far, he set a broken leg without realising he was doing it magically, um, which he's quite lucky for a first bloody thing that Paradox didn't knock him on his face. Mm. Um, but, uh, yes, so I think, yeah, I don't really want him out in the wild until he's got a hand on what's happened to him, and that could be years, realistically. Yep. Um, but I'll start, if, we, if you don't mind me borrowing the common room until then, no. <clears throat> Next day should be fairly safe here. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure fairly safe here, but that's what I'd rather him. You know, I'm all right about the road. I'm always, I was always, I was even half trying to do the math to see if I could go with him myself, but I don't think I can. Um, but we're going to get one of my former apprentices is coming to do the handling. So once she's with him, I'm not worried. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that should be right. If that's okay. Um, a staff sergeant will be sent round at one point to say if all of you would like dinner. Um. Either dinner could be bought here, or we obviously you could eat in the officer's mess if you wanted. I, I probably request something early so we can get back with it on this mm. time. Yes, yeah. and Harry can't go to the mess anyway. So mm, yes. yeah, someone will bring you some dinner to have here so you can head back. I mean, the advantage you've got is it's June, and the guy's memory's coming back after dark, so it's probably not going to be dark till yes, eight night. But, I want to but be it has there. to be there before yeah. well, before yeah. then. Um, someone will find you a British officer issue service revolver. To replace the German one, because you're quite right, people will ask questions about Actually, the German Actually, someone will one. notice I'm carrying a German, a German officer's gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask like, pressing oh. questions about where the German officer is, yeah. or where well, he's inspired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, as I say, the German officer didn't need it anymore. But, right now, I need to <laughs> They'll find you a British issue one. Right. So um the only other thing we will do, I think, if that's all right, we're at twenty yeah. So we will do um the appearance of the difference engineer, I think. Right. Um and then we can all get back to having Roger next week. I think that's probably yep. the best yep. sense for yeah. the idea. So um right. Uh shortly after we just pretty much finishing the dinner that's been brought round to all. Mm-hmm. Um uh uh, the um, somebody who knows where they're going presumably lets himself in the door, which is Louis, who you do know. Um, for everyone else's uh, information, so this is Louis. He's been sent over by the Difference Engineer. He's quite a slight but tall young man, um, probably in his sort of very early 20s, you'd have thought. Um, he's got um, quite dark sort of Southern European skin, um, and his accent is quite Portuguese when he talks as well. Um, he's wearing a very neat sort of fitted suit rather than any form of army anything, and very neat shirt, very neat tie. And mm-hmm. in general, he's very um, uh, you know, immaculately turned out mm-hmm. sort of man. Um, and it seems to be reasonably familiar with Abe as he heads over to mm-hmm. shake a hand as soon as he gets there. Abe, very yeah. well, thank How you. Very yeah. well, thank you. You all right over there? As all right as we ever are, but yeah, same old, same old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good, good, good. Glad to see. Yeah, yeah. That. Oh. Seriously, the data handling is insane at the moment. Um, everyone else is the best. But since the landings, we've just been absolutely snowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been lots of stuff back, including. Um, and yeah. he speaks English quite sort of easily and quite, you know, mm-hmm. fairly naturally. It's obviously not his first act language, but it's clearly, yeah, fluent speaking. Yeah, no, we've got yeah, a bunch of things. Snowed under back there is bad. No, it's bad. Uh, yeah, we've had a few things, and then they're sending me out on these. Feel things because there's no one else, in, you know, around in London to do all this kind of thing. So, you're doing a good job. <clears throat> but you know, he just does a good job. But Jeremy Crampton. Yeah, sorry, yeah, this is. Um, Louis Vuitton. Stand up. 
sort of awkwardly put my tea yeah. down. And... Are you going to introduce Louis or he'll introduce himself? Yeah, I was going to say, it's Jeremy Cunthorne, this is uh, Louis Deverth, uh, works on yeah, decoding things. I'm a difference engineer, I work at Bletchley Park. <clears throat> ah, see, I've gone into the habit of not Very saying where. Very interesting. Um, <clears throat> we may as well. We're all friends here. Well, we're all friends here, and Jacob. Mm-hmm. Here I love a good cipher. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, I've been. Um, yes. I was in England anyway studying, but I've been co opted in it. No more references. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> this is Captus, uh, Captus? <laughs> Captain Rufus. Pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. <laughs> Uh, um, who may be a German you, spy. Yeah. In the yeah, English army. British army. Jesus, is that is that Harry Walsby that? Is he? I was just saying. Quietly? Yeah, then Harry's. Is there a way in the comments? And Harry's through there, but you know Harry. Yeah, I've met him. Yeah, isn't. That other's a newly awakened um, hermetic avatar. Kid. Kid that was kidnapped. That's what we do. Did you mean not by you? No, we didn't do no. that. <laughs> Just check it. When you've got a kid and you say they've been kidnapped, it raises the question. <laughs> yeah, um, hang on. Where are their parents? What's it doing? There's badger with the We've got two hermetics here. And, yeah. That's an early awakening, though. <laughs> Maybe a strong one. Very. Mm. Well, apparently, it's some sort of yeah, famous oh, like hermetic one of those honey. Hermetic. Yeah, right, hermetics. But yeah, uh, reason... <laughs> I'll just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> we do our best. Oh, you know, these mages. We, we maybe are... wouldn't pick all up. If we lived in better times, we could all pick our allies differently, couldn't we? But we live in awful ones, so. Yes. I get what we get. So, I gather you have a rogue super soldier for me. Yeah, thanks for coming down. But yeah, like I say, he's got some. He's a bit corroded and old. Some ray gun. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Well, if you can make it do anything, I'll, I'll get you a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, they're American biscuits. <laughs> Don't like American biscuits. Yeah, no one likes American biscuits. Pretty sure even the Americans. No, I want, I want pasta tart. I've pasta tart in four years. I want pasta tart. Um, you need to keep some chickens. <laughs> do I look to you like a man that has time for chickens? Um, I'll play with the ray gun later. Uh-huh. Um okay, let's see the let's see the unfortunate victim of our progenitor friends, shall we? Well, progenitor clockwork convention. Um Why? Why did we do that? Cross convention study, apparently. The US, you know. I'd more money, the, time, space than uh, I checked really the I checked the lithograph the reference you sent and looked at the plans and you, mm. why do they do these things? Actually To to be fair, from what I from what I've been able to see Jeez. And he was very capable when fully operational. Very capable. Mm. But, you know... Oh, they've, I can imagine this kind of thing would just fall apart. people about. about like that. It's just, just nasty. Yeah. Yeah, the problem is, that, yeah, the, the people... It probably, oh, yeah, up. the progenitor that made them, yeah, probably isn't with us anymore anyway. No, but I'm surprised but they, that they're on our side, to be honest. Because, yeah, it's very much the other side's kind of... They've got yeah, all the progenitors that tend to do this type of thing. I make some weird decisions. Anyway, let's let's see the poor soul then. What am I actually doing before we get in there? Because I don't like talking about things like they're a piece of meat. What am I doing? Um, well, he's got a bunch of data, information centers about him that I don't know what's on them. I right. think part of his mind's on them, but part of them are unconnected. And then he was definitely, I think, I think whoever was getting him to do things might have been doing it from a technological <laughs> kind of messing around with the information on the non-biological part of his mind. There, there are some like holes you can like put wires into yeah I was doing to, all that yeah. he, he's got a number of all right so I've bought my kit okay let's go and visit the toe then mm-hmm. he smiles willingly at everyone he's very white teeth mm-hmm. um right um and they go through to the lab where he's sitting um uh, uh Marty is his so he's now called he's actually mm-hmm. sitting up on the bench mm-hmm. and he's tapping his fingers at patterns it looks like he's sort of not that, no. It looks almost <laughs> like he's checking whether they're all right. It's almost like he's sort of... Oh, I was going to say, put the typewriter no, in no, there no, and no, see no. where... He's, he's like, okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like he's connecting different bits. Mm-hmm. Um, you introduce the ring and find yeah. him somewhere you can... And he does have little, little ports. Mm-hmm. I was pretty sure I've probably seen yeah. something before. 
then Louis lines up a few things and then um, pulls out her um, like a, it's like a multimeter, but he's got loads of different little dials you can set to different things. I'm instantly confused. So he's turning them all to <laughs> different even, things. I wasn't going to say that. Was like, and then he yeah, turns them all to I'm, things. I'm and really interested, but I'm like... <laughs> and then he turns them all back again and then they move to other things themselves and, he writes like, so, and he's writing things down really fast as well. Like I so said, the hardware is all disconnected, so you're going to get some unusual readings. So yeah, I don't know yeah, how much yeah, of it's... Stay disconnected. Right, okay, so... Right, yeah, we've got, um, oh, Bomberg, this shit. Right, yeah. so we've got... Yeah, apparently he was nearby. Yeah, we can tell. we've got... Dang. Reasonable integral biological memory. Reasonably all right, actual artificial memory. Most of it's concerned with is using primarily physical mm -hmm. parameters, I think. Um, there's quite a lot of learn relay reactions in that though. Um, I wouldn't call them subconscious suggestion, but I am concerned they could feel like that from Marty Heer's viewpoint. Yeah. Um, most of them are very practical, you know, if you're going to jump this distance, you do this, do this, do mm -hmm. this. But some of them are combat related. Right. Um, they're not, you know, instantly shoot this type of thing or whatever. But they are, if you get in a firefight, priority targets are these sort of things and that kind of stuff. Right. It's been taught to go after other majors, I think, for the most part. All right. right. And, um, I think, yeah, I think he was probably going to be a command unit was the idea. Right. Um, so he's got the best specs of everything physically. It's just, unfortunately, it's, I mean, you guys have done a good job, actually. Oh. Right, so at the moment, most of that's unplugged. I could plug that back in. It's kind of up to him, really, if he wants to. I, it's not like, you know, a kill order or anything like that. It's but it, A lot of them are combat things, picking targets, identifying targets. Some of them are related to firing a gun, which is a completely alien art to me. But some of them are related to targeting and tracking moving targets mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So if it's all plugged in and working, probably does give them a significant advantage in the field. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that... This can't exist in the field, can it? Mm -hmm. So having like a, a big plan of things, I probably want to print it yeah. on the wall. So you think that's this data centre? Yeah, 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 that's this data centre. Let's move down to this. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with a big stick. Yeah. Or have you got a laser pointer? <laughs> no. uh, somebody fed some nasty ass energy into here at some point. And it's clogged up a load of the transmission. Yeah. Which I think you've mostly mostly flushed out now. Yeah. But um, there's some nasty ass. Give them a lot. Of sorry, quintessence for our tradition friends. There's some nasty ass energy being put in here at some point. Mm -hmm. It's all. Good. Yeah, well, I think very, very technical. Entropic. <laughs> well, I think that it might have been someone doing it with their own it's personal. Handy, possibly. Yeah, I think it was someone doing it with their own personal stuff, and then anyway, and it, when stuff. it went through them, it was probably. Good. Yeah. Himself is going to want to hear about this. Apparently, there was a uh, well on one of the transistors we removed. There was some sort of uh, room for Loki, apparently. Can you, can you let me make a copy of that? Give you transistor if you really want it. I don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I probably could. You can put it in an art box reality you'll never find if you want. Yeah. Um, we're. That sounds like fun. <laughs> we've got a little bit of a. I'm probably not supposed to put things. We're all on the same side, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, we are. Mm -hmm. We think they built a Colossus equivalent. Right. Over there. Um, except it's. Giant. Statue. Yeah, one of those. No. Uh, it's a. It's a code name for a uh, very complicated computer. Yeah, that sort of. Very good at cracking code. Everything, really. Never mind. Um, but we think they're building an equivalent, and we think they might have one of their fallen involved in the project. Right. And we're calling it Omega at the moment. Um. Uh, what do they call? Well, what were they? Do, you, do we know who it was? M? The boss does. I don't. Right. But I'm predictably Rooney is not my thing. But I'm sure that looks like one of the ones we've got on one of the smuggled documents. So I just want to take it to him so he can tell me if it's the same man or not. Okay. But certainly it's a fallen techno mage. Well, that's spitting up business when you're speaking so if you don't know, know that likely, at all then it sounds doesn't it so I'll take it to I've not seen if you want fine grains once you throw up and it's, it's full of a have you got a bag oh yeah, oh, yeah. something <laughs> um, but I'll take it back to himself and see what he says um okay but he's I don't think he's slept pretty much since the landing 
Right, well. Because the amount of data mm. he's moving at any given point is just. I don't know how he's still sane. I'm not sure I'd be. It's up to him. It's going to end badly if he keeps on that way, though. He's special. Um. But you think we're right to reconnect everything if Marty wants? This one, you think, is combat stuff? Do you know if any of the other ones are any particular? No, most of them are to do with, well, as you call it very accurately described, their reflexive reactions. Mm. No. So he's going to be considerably stronger and faster than us lot when he's running at full capacity. Yeah. But the chance of getting him running at full capacity outside the lab seems unlikely to me. Well, actually, one and a half limbs. Mm-hmm. But so, like, no, I get a feeling that it'd be. Yeah. We've mostly repaired the leg, and I think that. It should heal by itself, I mean, given his own internal energy and healing mechanism. But the, the, the problem is that he's got an anti, um, sort of, uh, what would be the right word? Uh, anti decohesive right, matrix. Okay, yeah. So he holds yeah, together. No, if he's got enough power, he'll stay whole. Yeah, you might be able to power it up enough for short trips out. Well, I'm pretty sure that's the idea. And we're been... sending him away now. Where mm, he wants to go. Yeah, Lewis is. Keeping him around in case we need his help. It's up to Marty. He can stay here. He can go to a lab in Warwick that's probably better perfumed, but further away. And I'd prefer if he stayed here for a little while while we're still dealing with the current situation. But if he wants to go to Warwick, I mean, he's probably going to get better care there. I wouldn't deny it. And it'll probably take him a couple of weeks. Might be you mean York? York. Sorry, I meant York. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, Lewis here in Warwick recently. <laughs> he could he could come back with us, but. Honestly, I think if he's in here at the moment and he's stable here, yeah, yeah. I think stay here and heal up a bit more and make decisions when he's feeling a bit better. I, th- I thought that's what they might... do with patients. Exactly. If they're he's stable a... in a location, don't move them. That's exactly. Likely to... I think stay here with you for a bit. You know what? You've done a bloody good job saying there'll be a better standard of care in York. And they've not got many progenitors left up there anyway. He's yeah, got all the gizmos and gadgets here he needs exactly. for it. Exactly. But if there's a biological problem, we've only really got. Medics, really. Well, yeah. wait till old McDougal's back. No, you got yourself one of the witches. Well, I think so. We're I'm not sure. Th- until we can learn to speak to his dog, we're He's not a seven sure foot mountain with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, witch is probably the. Foot? Well. <laughs> Even so, you know, I'm. I exaggerate for effect. <laughs> He's a big chap. That sounds with like a big, a big gun. Worth seeing. I will come back. And on, a big dog. I will come yeah. back He's on a day no, in when no you way a witch. Him, <laughs> right. I will have to come back and meet him. Probably man um, of the land. He's probably. I don't know. He didn't speak much. It's always a quiet one. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Well, in which case, if you've got yourself a something. That would have worked out well in here, but um, no, that's the problem. But Speaking of him, we do need to go and catch up with him soon. You do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's what I would advise. I think if he's stable here, let him stay here. No. There's time to make decisions when we know a bit. And if he's got this in him, he points at the bag he's got the transistor in. Had, but yeah. He might still have some useful information on all of this. So. Mm. And he's feeling better. Stuff's hopefully going to come back. I mean, that's the advantage of the biological memory over the program. Yeah, sure. The program that's degraded is never going to heal. Um. So, unfortunately for him, I'm afraid that a considerable amount of his water-based manoeuvre is gone forever, I think. Um, oh. There's to be swimming and stuff in it. But those are gone, I think. That section is completely degraded. And I think it looks like someone was possibly contemplating paratrooping, which with something this expensive is just insane. But I think the reflex arcs for them are gone. If he wants you to need get a them, heavy. He's quite heavy. heavy. You need a really big parachute. That's yeah. you, or talking- two. But somebody put I'm the, sure it works somebody like put the stabilities in. Um, but if he wants to do that, he'll have to learn to do it in his own right. It's going to be alongside, but, yeah, the tank crashing. Yeah, that one. yeah, that one. The um, the, the um, yeah. Pardon? <laughs> the um. <laughs> the um. I thought that was a joke. So he's the right lab man. <laughs> Anything goes. <apparently. laughs> Anything goes. Um, but you know, if he wants to either learn to swim while weighing the same as a small car, or parachute while weighing the same as a small car, he's mm. going to have to relearn that from scratch. I'm afraid I can't do that. Um, the, we might be able to find copies of that kind of stuff because I believe it was in a lab in the US, so it might oh, still, maybe the something will happen. Still re- oh, something possibly. might be in the schematics. I didn't get much more than the casual inventory. But either way, he doesn't need to swim. Yeah. We're in Bedfordshire. No. We're landlocked. You're good. Okay. Right. Well, thanks, Louis. Like That's say, right. If I'm you gonna... come across any information on that, 
the valve, then I'll I'll show it to himself. But yeah, if you can pass anything back along, I think it might be connected to what we're doing here, so that'd be nice. Yeah? I'll give you a call. <laughs> might. Or I'll give Jacob <laughs> a call, and then three days later he'll tell you I gave you a call, and then mm-hmm. we'll finally catch up with each other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now you got yourself saddled with that one. No, he's he's good. He's just got his own ways. Right. Lovely to meet you, gentlemen. Pleasure to meet you say, too. Do come up to Fletchy mm-hmm. Park one day. You can see a ridiculous amount of things that you probably won't like or understand, but you know. If you can get the clearance, I'll always, wave my, my pocket watch yeah. at him Outdoor as he's he, 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 he he about to leave. Oh, okay. oh, that's neat. Um, right, he smiles winningly at everyone and sweeps off again with his little baggy. <laughs> <laughs> he's got his doggy bag. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I think we should end it there for tonight. We are ever so slightly early, but we're okay. going to have a slightly oh, short episode, aren't we? No, we've Oh, no, no, we're, we're on time. Marvellous. Yeah. So, yeah. full episode. Excellent. There we go. Um, and um, we will reconvene when we have our Canadian friend practices. Mm, yes. Someone indeed. remind me at the beginning next time to give his, our Canadian friend set to be as well. Yes. Mm. And the extra bit from this one, maybe. For all of us. You two will have ten. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Um, that was really cool. I, I enjoy the unfolding story and how things all linked together. It's good. Um, please don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, please also go and check out the Patreon. Uh, it would be great if you could uh, support the channel uh, in any way you can. Um, also check out the podcast we'll have links for all of these things um, but until next time we'll see you on Masters of Monsters bye bye